All right, so if you were to go on Google and search for dinner recipes, one of the most common phrases that comes up is chicken dinner recipes, and for good reason, right? Everyone is looking for more recipes for chicken, especially for dinner. It's so family friendly, and it's really one of the most economical options out there. And so today, I have got almost three hours of awesome chicken dinner recipes for you guys. You are not gonna wanna miss this. I will have timestamps in the description box below, so don't miss those. And let's get into the most delicious chicken dinner recipes. You guys are gonna get so much inspiration from this. The first three dinner recipes I am sharing are coming out of the Cook Once, Eat All Week cookbook from Cassie Joy Garcia, and I highly recommend this cookbook. It's awesome. The first meal that we're gonna prep is a green chili chicken casserole. The next one is a chicken Parmesan bake. This is probably the one I'm looking the most forward to. And then lastly is a Cajun chicken and rice skillet. So here are all the ingredients that you'll need for these three dinner recipes. Really, this is a lot of great food with minimally processed ingredients. So what you'll need is a bunch of cilantro. This has already been uh, washed and dried. I also have two bell peppers, one red and one green three limes, two lemons, one jalapeno. We're probably only gonna use about half of that. Two tomatoes. I have another tomato if I need it, actually. I might use the extra one because I'm gonna be making some pico de gallo with it. Uh, one yellow onion, five cloves of garlic. You'll also need some shredded Parmesan cheese. You could definitely probably use the kind in the green can if that's what you have. I have this um, little chunk of Parmesan cheese that I'm gonna use up that was in my cheese drawer. You'll also need some shredded uh, cheese. You can use whatever. I'm using this Tillamook Mexican four cheese blend. You'll also need some olive oil, some sour cream. I'm using light sour cream, three tablespoons of butter, some diced green chilies. The recipe calls for one 10 ounce can of diced green chilies. I could not find that, so I'm using two four ounce cans. You'll also need two cups of rice some pasta you also need some cumin um, i'm using some chicken bouillon powder to make my chicken broth but if you don't have this you could use a can of chicken broth or a box of chicken broth some cajun style andouille sausage whatever brand you can find the original recipe calls for pork rinds to keep this low carb but i don't have any of those on hand and i had this little pack of panko so I'm gonna use that instead. If you're not low carb, you could use breadcrumbs, or if you wanna keep it low carb or paleo, go ahead and use the pork rinds. Um, another substitution I'm making is the original cookbook actually calls to make your own marinara sauce with a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, but I have this jar of Rayos on hand, and it's 28 ounces, and so rather than purchasing extra ingredients, I'm using this. And then you'll also need some um, chicken. Let me show you how I cook that. Okay, so the night before, I went ahead and prepped my chicken. So I just have a sheet tray here lined with some foil. And I have about four pounds of chicken breasts on there. And I'm going to drizzle those with olive oil and then just season them with salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder. You do want to keep the seasonings pretty neutral on this because you're going to be using it for three different dishes. Um, one's more of like a Cajun dish. Dish. One is uh, a Mexican dish and the other one is an Italian dish. So just salt, pepper, garlic powder worked fine for me. You can definitely customize the amount of salt if you're watching your sodium. I also drizzled those with olive oil and I'm just going to pop them in a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes until they are cooked through. The original recipe actually called for five pounds of chicken breast, and I thought I had defrosted that much, but I only cooked the four pounds and it was perfect. It's actually more than enough, I think, for these three recipes. So for the chicken, once it's cool, you can go ahead and chop it up into cubes, and this is what you're going to use in each of your dishes. So I'm just putting that in a glass container the first thing that I'm going to do is cook my rice, and I'm using my Instant Pot to do this. I am not that great at cooking rice on the stovetop, and so it's the best for me <laughs> if I go ahead and cook it in my Instant Pot. So I'm just putting equal amounts of rice and water into my pot. I do like to season it with a little bit of salt and then put the lid on, set it to sealing. And my Instant Pot has a rice button. I'm gonna accidentally push the multigrain button and wonder what's going on, but oh yes, I have the wrong one pushed. So. 
I just go ahead and push the rice button. It sets it for 12 minutes on low pressure. You might want to turn that up a little bit if you're using brown rice because brown rice does take longer to cook. But once that's done, I let it do a natural pressure release for about 10 minutes and then fluff it up with a fork. And we're going to use this rice in the green chili chicken casserole recipe as well as the Cajun chicken and rice casserole recipe. Uh, this cookbook gives you actually a lot of different options in terms of putting the dishes together ahead of time or just prepping the components and leaving them in the fridge and then assembling them later. Um, we're going to do it in a way where we're mostly prepping the meals ahead of time, which I find is most helpful for me, especially on busy weeknights after I get off of work. So I am going to start out with the Cajun chicken and rice recipe. This one turned out so good. I would definitely recommend it. So for this recipe, you'll use half of the yellow onion. You can reserve the other half for the pico de gallo that we'll make later in the video. And you'll also need one green bell pepper and one red bell pepper cut into strips. I'm just cutting these peppers and onions into strips and putting them in my skillet. I have a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of my skillet. And then I'm just going to saute those up until they get a little bit soft before I add the andouille sausage. I really like this recipe a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, not that I don't like chicken and sausage together, but I don't know that I've actually ever purchased the smoked andouille sausage before. And I can definitely say that I will be purchasing it again. Um, it's spicy, but it's not too spicy. Like I think that it's still mild enough that my kids would enjoy it. Um, but I did of course try some so I could share it with you guys how it tasted and it's delicious. I also wanted to mention that even if you don't want to meal prep these meals, you can totally just make them as regular meals on a weeknight too, or you could prep them for lunches during the week as well. So I'm just cutting that sausage and this is pre-cooked sausage so basically we just need to crisp it up in the skillet but I'm cutting that kind of on a little bit of a bias um, thinly sliced and then I will put that into the skillet along with my caramelized onions and peppers and just stir that around until there is some color on the sausage make sure that you keep stirring that because since those onions are small they will tend to burn um, if you don't stir the mixture Sorry for the camera shake there, but I was smashing my garlic. Um, if you guys have never chopped fresh garlic before, basically you just want to take the cloves apart, put it on your cutting board or your butcher block, in my case, my butcher block, and smash it with the side of your knife. I actually have a video all about how to chop produce, so I'll link that down below if you want to watch that as well. I do wait until the mixture is almost cooked to add the garlic because garlic does burn easy and you obviously don't want that. I also added a little bit of butter to the skillet and what I'm going to do is just uh, remove the sausage and the veggies and put those into a casserole dish that way I can cook my chicken well I guess I'm not really cooking the chicken because the chicken is already cooked I just want to crisp it up and give it a little bit of that flavor uh, from the butter that was left over in the pan so I'm just stirring that around and then you can see I also have a few lemons in there that are just in the pan cut side down you want to just caramelize those a little bit and then when you serve this dish you can squeeze those lemons over the veggies and the rice. So here is my mixture of my chicken, veggies, and sausage. So good. As I was making this, I was sneaking bites of the sausage because it was so delicious. And then I just chose to deglaze my pan with a little bit of wine. You can use chicken broth. You don't have to do that. I just wanted to clean it out a little bit before I added the rice. So then I added half of my cooked rice and I did season that with a little bit of oregano, um, poured some of the chicken broth in there and some salt and some paprika. And that is it. So I, like I said, prepped this whole dish ahead of time. So I just put it in a nine by 13 pan with the veggies and sausage on one side and the rice on the other. What I will probably do when I go to reheat this is just cover it up with foil 
maybe add a little bit of chicken broth over the rice to make sure that it doesn't dry out and then just stick it in the oven until it's warmed through and we have dinner it's that simple so I'm gonna go ahead and get this covered up and into the fridge and dinner number one is done okay so when I think of chicken dinner recipes one thing that I think of the most is Green Chef because I've been using them for years to spice up my dinner game and I wanna thank Green Chef for sponsoring today's video. You guys that have been with me for a while know that they have been sponsoring videos on my channel for a long time. I honestly think that they are uh, most likely the longest running sponsor here on my channel so I just want to thank them for being such a great support. Green Chef really does help me eat cleaner and live a healthy lifestyle. They have tons of options for different recipes. Obviously they don't only have <laughs> just chicken recipes. They have a ton of different options on their website and I feel like even now they are adding more and more. Recently I have tried a lot of the lunch and breakfast meals that they have in addition to dinner meals. They also have add-ons available and I just feel like they have such a great variety of recipes. They really have something for everyone, right? And the thing I love about Green Chef is that a lot of the ingredients come like pre-portioned, uh, pre-measured, pre-packaged, so that especially if you wanna try new things like uh, unique ingredients that might be hard to find, it's a really great opportunity to do that. And they also have just like delicious flavor combinations that you wouldn't normally think of. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys this delicious a uh, barbecue cheddar chicken sandwich that I made and it had like a creamy coleslaw on this side. I don't know why I've never thought to pair like barbecue chicken and cheese on a sandwich before, but it was so good. So let me show you how I made that. So probably my favorite part about Green Chef is that everything just comes already packaged and prepped for you. You can see that I've got some cheese, some ciabatta rolls, seasonings, uh, veggies, meat, all of that good stuff. Obviously the recipe cards are super easy to read and easy to follow. Even if you are not a super seasoned home cook, I feel like you can definitely follow these. I always recommend people also that are just starting to learn how to cook use meal prep boxes like this because it's just so simple, right? So the first thing I'm doing is making the slaw. This was really good. It came with like a lemon aioli. I mixed it with some creme fraiche. By the way, I can never find creme fraiche in my grocery stores around here. So I was happy that they sent that for me. And then the lunch recipes that I have been trying from Green Chef recently, and some of the dinner recipes have been coming with this cooked chicken. It is such a time saver. And I know some people are like pretty leery about pre-cooked chicken, but this chicken that they send is delicious. I recommend it. It's really good. Basically, I, you know, slice it up into thin slices. I put it into a nonstick skillet with some salt and pepper, the seasoning, some barbecue sauce, and a little bit of water. And basically, I'm just heating that over about medium heat until the chicken heats through. And this is what's gonna go on our sandwiches. So this meal is basically a very simple but very delicious um, chicken, you know, barbecue chicken sandwich with cheddar cheese on ciabatta rolls with a slaw on the side. Now the recipe said to heat this in the microwave, but I preferred to do it over the stove because that's just what I preferred. Um, for the buns, I did toast them in a skillet with a little bit of butter. And then I'm just adding the cooked chicken with the barbecue seasoning on top of those. I'm adding some of the shredded cheese that was included in the box on top. And I'm just gonna put the top on that. Obviously the heat from the bun and the chicken is going to melt the cheese and OMG, you guys, this was so good. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Uh, if you guys haven't tried Green Chef yet, definitely do it. All the flavor combinations I have tried from them have been delicious. I'm going to try the coleslaw and then, of course, the sandwich. And it was so good. So good. So the best part is, is that Green Chef is offering my viewers an exclusive discount. So this is the perfect time to try Green Chef if you haven't yet. Like I said, they have tons of options for everyone. And the reason why I really like it so much is that it just, it, it makes me not have to think about dinner, right? And like, as a busy working mom, like the less things I can think about, the more things I can put on autopilot, just like, 
the better it's gonna be, right? For me and for everyone else in my family. But you guys can use my code JenChapin60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. You can go to greenchef.com for more details. I'll have that link in the description box below and also in a pinned comment. Once again, the code is JenChapin60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Uh, again, if you guys are looking for some really delicious, innovative recipes that you've never tried before, some that are probably chicken and really delicious, don't forget to check out that link below or tap the screen right here. Okay, so next up is the chicken parmesan bake and I am going to take my mini lasagna noodles and boil those per the package directions. Like I said earlier, you can use zoodles for this, you can use whole wheat pasta, you can use gluten-free pasta. Definitely one of my favorite things about these meal preps is that the ingredients are so versatile and customizable. Um, you can really use them with any diet plan that you're on. On. So once the noodles are cooked, I'm just tossing these with a little bit of butter or you could also use olive oil, some salt and some garlic powder just to give them a little bit of flavor. I have a casserole dish here. Don't don't ask me for a link for this casserole dish because I got it probably uh, a little less than 20 years ago at a Pyrex outlet and I have no idea how to get another one, but I love it. Uh, so I put the pasta in the bottom of my baking dish after I sprayed that with cooking spray. I topped that with a third of the chicken that we cooked up and diced. And then on top of that, okay, I can't get my <laughs> jar open here. I had to run and get a, uh, a rubber band. But uh, yeah, just a tip there. If you have a jar that you can't get open, put a rubber band around it and you'll be able to uh, get that open. But anyway, pour your marinara sauce over the top. If you're following the recipe exactly, you would have made your own with the crushed tomatoes. Either way, use what you have on hand. It will work just fine. I actually think this would be really good with Alfredo sauce too. Then it wouldn't be chicken parm, but it would still be good. So here's what it looks like. If you were gonna prep this ahead of time, this is where I would leave it. I would put foil on, put it in the fridge, and then that way you have it ready to bake during the week for dinner. There is a crunchy topping that goes on top of it. So I have my panko breadcrumbs in a bowl there and I'm just grating some of that Parmesan cheese. You could use mozzarella cheese too. Use whatever cheese you have on hand. It'll totally be fine and it'll taste delicious. Uh, it was a funny thing actually. My kids really didn't like the crunchy topping, which I kind of thought was the best part. They just ate the chicken and the pasta and the sauce, but what do you kids know anyway? Um, so I'm adding some... Um, olive oil, a little bit of olive oil and some parsley to that. The olive oil just helps the panko breadcrumbs crisp up. And then I'm topping that over top of the casserole and I'll bake that in the oven at 350 degrees. The recipe called for 20 minutes, but that wasn't long enough. I did turn the oven temperature up to I think like 400 and I probably baked it for about 30 to 40 minutes just to make sure that it was warmed through. Hi Murphy. He's supervising me as I cook. Um, but definitely you'll have to increase the cooking time also if it has been refrigerated. So just, you know, go with your gut, cook it until um, it's done. Everything is cooked in it really. You're just kind of warming it through. So while that's in the oven, I'm going to chop up some lettuce to make a salad. And I love making the Olive Garden copycat salad. That is my kid's favorite salad. And when I make it, they actually eat it, which is awesome. So I do use iceberg lettuce. Sometimes I use the pre-washed kind in the bag, but I did have some that I had prepped previously. So I'm putting that in my salad bowl along with some cucumbers and some sliced tomatoes. I'm also going to add some Parmesan cheese on top of that, um, some croutons and some black olives. All right, so here's my salad. All I do is just toss this with some Italian dressing and serve it up family style. Here's what the chicken parm bake looks like when it comes out of the oven. The top is nice and crunchy, and then you've got those layers of pasta and cheese underneath. I just served this up in some bowls with the salad on the side, and my kids had some bread and butter as well. Okay, now we are on to the green chili chicken casserole. The first part of this recipe is to make uh, pico de gallo and so I am mincing up some onion. I'm also going to 
to chop up a couple of tomatoes and get those into the bowl as well. So I'm also going to mince up about a quarter, or I'm sorry, about a half of this jalapeno. You can include the seeds if you want. I did not because I'm going to be mixing this with the rice and my kids aren't into super spicy stuff. They will eat stuff that's a little bit spicy. Um, and then next I'm going to squeeze in the juice of one lime and then the only thing left is some cilantro and salt and pepper. A lot of times when I make pico, I actually um, also like to use garlic, like minced garlic in my pico. I think it gives it a really good flavor. So you could definitely do that if you wanted to. I did not this time. Um, I'm adding about half of a bunch of that cilantro to the bowl, and then I'm just going to give that a good stir. So this is, again, one of those meals where you can prep the components and then assemble it the night of. I went ahead and opted to just prep the whole thing. I have prepped mini casseroles with rice in them before and left them in the fridge, and it works out just fine. So here's the pico. You know, even if you're not making this recipe, you could just prep some pico and have that in your fridge. You could use it on salads or on grilled meat. You could also use it with chips it's delicious and it gets better the longer it sits in your fridge actually so I have a uh, baking dish here these are the disposable ones that I get from Costco and I'm just emptying the rest of my rice into the bottom of that I did spray this with a little bit of cooking spray just to make sure that it didn't stick and then I'm sprinkling some cumin over the top of the rice and then I'm just going to pour that pico right in there and get that mixed up and I'm also going to add the juice of one lime. I have never thought to mix pico de gallo with rice before and eat it but it's delicious. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I've never thought of that before but it really makes a, gr a great like flavorful um, layer in this dish and I also wanted to mention too that if you are doing low carb you could totally substitute cauliflower rice for the regular rice in these dishes and I think it would be just as good so next I'm going to make the green chili sauce that goes with the chicken on top of the rice layer so I'm just using my Nutribullet blender you could use a food processor or a regular blender whatever you have and I'm putting two cans of green chilies into the blender i accidentally put my citrus juicer in the dishwasher so i'm just squeezing it old-fashioned by hand <laughs> if your citrus fruits are warm out on the counter they'll squeeze much better than right out of the fridge um, i'm putting in some more cilantro about a quarter of that bunch of cilantro and then next i'm going to add some cumin even though the recipe didn't call for it i decided to add some <laughs> i also forgot to mention i think in the um, beginning of the video there were a couple of spices that I forgot to um, mention when I was showing you guys all of the groceries I think just paprika oregano and cumin oh and garlic powder were the only ones so I think those are pretty standard though I think probably a lot of people have those in their spice cabinet so next I'm adding two cloves of garlic and then a half a cup of sour cream I'm using light sour cream and then just give this a zhuzh in your blender or your food processor and let that go until it is completely combined this is delicious sauce uh, you could use this for enchiladas you could use it on tacos you could just eat it with a spoon <laughs> whatever you want to do it's really good but I'm gonna pour this in the dish with the remainder of the chicken. This is the last third of the chicken that we're using for this last recipe. And combine that well, and then you're just gonna to top that on top of your rice layer of your casserole dish. So um, yeah, I, I've never thought to make a casserole like this before. I don't know why. Um, I just am continually impressed by this cookbook, you guys. If you don't have it, uh, go out and get it. There are some awesome recipes in here and I have made quite a few recipes actually out of this book and I haven't been disappointed by any of them yet. Um, when this, at the end of this video, I'll also link another budget meal prep that I've done using this book if you're interested in watching another one of those. So on top of that layer, I'm just adding the cheese. I believe the recipe called for one cup of cheese, but I just added the whole bag because why not, right? 
can't go wrong <laughs> with more cheese. And uh, this casserole, I think, would probably serve six people, especially if you served it like with some chips and salsa or maybe some fruit on the side. Uh, definitely a large portion of meals. And I cannot wait to eat this. Um, I'll have to let you guys know how it is when we eat it for dinner. Uh, but definitely looking forward to that Tex-Mex night, maybe with some chips and guac or chips and queso on the side. So I'll just pop that into the fridge after I cover it up with foil and it will be ready to bake later in the week. Okay, so I thought I would share a recipe out of my cookbook. If you guys don't know, yes, I have a cookbook. I wrote it a couple of years ago and it is available on Amazon, so I will link it down below. We are going to make some delicious butter chicken and baked brown rice. If you're not familiar with my cookbook, it's called The Essential Pantry Cookbook and it came out early in 2021. And essentially what it does is features a list of ingredients that you can keep in your freezer and pantry and then all of the recipes in the book are made from those ingredients, which I think is a really neat concept, especially if you're trying to stay on a budget. So the first recipe that I'm going to show you guys out of the book is the butter chicken recipe, and we're going to make some baked brown rice with that. Now, if you've never made buttered chicken before, never fear, uh, I guess counterintuitive to what the name says, there's only three tablespoons of butter in the whole batch. So it's actually quite healthy, uses a broth of, um, or a sauce of like chicken broth, tomatoes, and coconut milk. So what I'm doing now is I am making a base to marinate my chicken in, and this is going to make it super tender. So I have some sour cream in the bowl here. I mix some lemon juice with that, and next I'm gonna add some spices. So I'm going to add some turmeric, and I'm also going to add some garam masala and some cumin. I normally get most of my spices from Thrive Market, and it's a great way to source them. You can keep them in glass jars in your pantry, and they last a super long time, and they're really fresh and delicious. But the purpose of doing this is to tenderize your chicken. I decided to use sour cream in this particular recipe because it's a pantry cookbook and I didn't have room for a lot of extra ingredients. So you could also use plain yogurt to marinate the chicken, which I think is what is more traditionally done. Um, you could also use buttermilk. Any of those things would really work. So I have some chicken breast here and I'm just cutting this up into bite-sized pieces. It's just for, um, you know, regular sized chicken breasts. You could also use chicken thighs if you want to. I tend to prefer white meat, but obviously the choice is up to you. And you'll want to marinate this chicken for at least least 30 minutes. More time is better. You can actually marinate it in the refrigerator up to a day. It just depends on how much time you have. I think I marinated this batch for about six to maybe six to eight hours and it turned out really great. So once you get your chicken cut up, you can just put it into the sour cream and lemon juice mixture along with all those spices. And so not only is this going to tenderize the chicken, but it's also going to season it uh, as well. So once I had everything combined, I just covered this with some plastic wrap and stuck it in the refrigerator. This is something you could also do in the morning and it would be all ready for you when you wanted to cook dinner in the evening. So when you're ready to cook this, you just want to heat up a large pot. I'm using a Dutch oven. I put some olive oil in the bottom of that. And then I'm going to add the chicken and sour cream mixture. Now this isn't really going to saute and brown like normal season chicken would because it's very wet from the sour cream mixture, but that's fine. Don't worry about trying to strain it off. It's all going to mix together in the sauce and it's going to be delicious. You just kind of want to get the chicken cooked a little bit before we add the rest of the sauce ingredients. So I'm going to add a couple cloves of garlic that I crushed. Um, you could use pre-minced garlic if you wanted to. I've really been liking fresh garlic lately, um, but just go ahead and put that into the pot with the chicken and give that a stir. You want to cook this over probably medium to medium high heat until it is mostly cooked through. Next, I'm going to add one can of petite diced tomatoes, and then I'm also going to add one cup of chicken broth. You could also add um, vegetable broth if you wanted to. In fact, that's what the actual recipe in the cookbook calls for, but you could use either. I have some spices here that I'm going to add. 
I'm adding some paprika, some turmeric, some garam masala, cumin, and salt, and we're just gonna give that a stir. Obviously, you can season this to your taste. If you want it to be spicier, you could add more hot sauce. I am gonna add a few dashes of hot sauce. Um, you can use whatever hot sauce you have on hand. It's not a big deal. And then we're just gonna simmer that for about 30 minutes until the chicken gets super tender. After it simmers for about 30 minutes, you wanna just go ahead and stir in three tablespoons of butter. Like I said, this does not make the dish obviously have a ton more calories in it. It just kind of smooths out the sauce. And then you're also going to add some coconut milk as well. Now, one thing about this sauce is as it's made, it is pretty thin, which is fine. I eat it like that with rice. Um, actually in the cookbook, I didn't have enough ingredients available to add cornstarch, but I do most of the time prefer to um, thicken this with a little bit of cornstarch and water slurry, but like I said, it's totally optional or you could use a different type of thickener if you wanted to. So after you stir in the coconut milk and the butter, then I just took a small bowl and I mixed together probably a tablespoon of cornstarch with a couple tablespoons of cold water and I just poured that in to the um, butter chicken mixture and stirred that up and just thickened it and simmered it for about five minutes and it's complete. This is so delicious and tender. If you like curries, you will definitely like this. You can also make it with other types of meat as well. Just adjust the cooking time. But I'm going to show you also my recipe for brown rice, which is in the cookbook as well. It's super easy to make and if you struggle with cooking rice on the stove like I do, baking it in the oven is an awesome option. So you just put a couple cups of brown rice in a nine by 13 pan, season it with a little bit of salt, and then I add a couple tablespoons of butter or you could add olive oil as well. And then you just wanna pour in some boiling water over the top, I use my you know regular kettle to do that, stir it around and then cover it with foil. And I bake this at 400 degrees for about an hour. After it's done cooking, you wanna take the foil off, fluff it and let it cool down and you're good to go. If you wanna make white rice, you just cook it for 30 minutes instead of 60. But here is what the completed dish looks like, my brown rice with the butter chicken. This is definitely a delicious recipe. I highly recommend it, like I said, and I will link uh, my cookbook down below. Also let me know in the comments if you have my cookbook and your favorite recipe out of it. Well, if you're anything like me, you're always looking for new dinner ideas using chicken and today I have got four awesome slow cooker recipes for you all using chicken. I really think that these are some unique slow cooker recipes with some flavor combinations that maybe you haven't tried before. When you're using your slow cooker, we're gonna be making chicken tikka masala, some Greek tabbouleh with chicken, as well as a barbecue chicken recipe that you are not gonna wanna miss. So let's get started. We are going to make slow cooker chicken tikka masala, and I am so excited. This is in the America's Test Kitchen complete slow cooker cookbook on page 91. It's this recipe right here. So what you'll need for this is some salt and pepper, some whole milk Greek yogurt. We're actually gonna stir that in at the end. One can of diced tomatoes that are drained, one onion chopped, about one tablespoon of ground ginger, three garlic cloves minced, uh, about three tablespoons of vegetable oil, two teaspoons of sugar, one uh, packet, which is two tablespoons of tomato paste. The recipe calls for a serrano chili, but I don't have one of those and I have a hard time finding them around here. So I'm actually gonna use three jalapenos. They're very small and I got them off of my indoor garden. I also have about two pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast that I cut up into about one and a half inch pieces. Some garam masala, this is a spice blend and I have a hard time finding it around here. So sometimes I order this either on Thrive or on Amazon. I'll try to link some down below. And then at the end, you'll also need some cilantro. Okay, so one of the things that I really like about this slow cooker cookbook is that it really truly is, for the most part, a slow cooker cookbook. You know, there will be some recipes sometimes that you see that are billed as 
uh, slow cooker meals, but you have to, you know, cook things on the stove before you put them into the crock pot. And I know that sometimes you can't avoid that, but for the most part, this cookbook actually will have you microwave things when you can, which I think is really cool. And it obviously cuts down on dishes. It cuts down on, you know, the splatter on your stove when you're sauteing things in oil. So the first thing that we're going to do is just chop up an onion. And I just have a yellow onion here. It's just a medium sized yellow onion. I'm kind of curious to see what my kids will think about this dish. You know, they don't really mind spicy food. Not that this is going to be super spicy. Um, and I've made curry before and they're kind of like, eh, they're kind of on the fence about it. So we'll see. Uh, these jalapenos are so <laughs> tiny. I could probably just include the seeds right in there, but I'm going to try to get most of them out because I don't want it to be too spicy, but I have an indoor hydroponic garden and I did a video on it a while ago. It's sort of um, a lot of, of upkeep, not, not a lot. It's just, I think it's more upkeep than I thought it would be, but it is really nice, you know, on the flip side to have like fresh herbs and grains during the winter months, especially here in Iowa where it's cold and we can't do those kind of things outside. Um, but these jalapenos took a while to grow. I would say, you know, we probably planted these before Christmas and it's May now. So I do think probably things inside have a tendency to grow a little bit slower than they would outside. Okay, so I need to microwave uh, the onion, pepper, garlic, and ginger. So I just have a microplane grater here and you don't have to peel ginger before you grate it. Um, there's no really need to do that. And if you want a tip, leave your ginger in the freezer. I didn't with this particular batch because I just bought this at the grocery store like earlier this week but you can actually keep your ginger in the freezer in like a big block like this and then when you need it you can just grate it into your dish frozen and it stays better like that for a long time and then you can always have fresh ginger because obviously you know powdered ginger is is good and I have used that before too um, but Fresh ginger is really nice. So that's in there. And then since I have my microplane out, I'm just gonna go ahead and grate my garlic cloves. Did you guys ever watch um, Rachel Ray back in the day? I can remember her <laughs> doing this. Just be careful not to grate your thumbs. Also a tip on the microplane, I can link this one I have down below. You do need to replace your microplane every couple of years because just like any kitchen tool, it will dull. So I actually didn't know that and I had my previous one for like, oh my gosh, probably eight years <laughs> before I replaced it. Okay, so I've got in there onion, garlic, ginger, uh, pepper. I'm gonna put in my vegetable oil and then it also says to put in the tomato paste. I do not remember where this tomato paste came from in the packet like this, but it's super convenient. I think I've seen these in the store like in boxes before of packets like this, but I may have also gotten this from a meal kit. But you can also find like on Thrive, they have like the tubes of tomato paste, which is really convenient because then you can just stick it back in the fridge. All right, so we're gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of salt. And then we also need to put in four teaspoons of garam masala. Did you know that there are three teaspoons in one tablespoon? I feel like I learned that in home ec when I was in high school. Okay, and then next we're just gonna put the sugar in, two teaspoons of that, and just stir this around until everything is combined. And then I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave for about five minutes until everything is soft and I'm gonna get my slow cooker out. I was gonna show you guys in case you're curious about what's in uh, garam masala. It is cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cumin, black pepper, and coriander. While the peppers are microwaving, I'm just gonna go ahead and season my chicken with some salt and pepper. Uh, like I said, this is, I think it's just shy of two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I 
uh, thought it out and cut it up. All right, so I have my slow cooker here and my aromatics are done microwaving. These smell so delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those into the slow cooker. Okay, so I stirred in my diced tomatoes and next I'm gonna add my chicken. I really like that this recipe uses uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Obviously it's very accessible and it's a great way to use up any chicken that you have in your freezer. So once this is stirred together, that's it. I'm just gonna put the lid on this and cook this on low for two to three hours. I'm thinking probably closer to three hours. Slow cookers can really vary depending on the brand. Um, one time I actually read an article that said that you should put some water in your slow cooker and heat it to whatever setting and then you can measure the temperature of the water with like a candy thermometer and then you can kind of gauge better but i have like four slow cookers and you just kind of get to know them which cook hotter and which cook on a lower temperature so i think i'm going to start with about two and a half hours and then we'll check it and see how it is all right, so what I have done is I've taken about a half a cup of the chicken tikka masala sauce out of the crock pot and I've mixed it with about three quarters of a cup of whole milk yogurt to temper it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this back into the sauce, serve with our rice and our naan bread. So I'm gonna stir this in, give it a taste, and then add the salt and pepper as needed. All right, so I tasted the chicken tikka masala and it is delicious. Definitely stir some cilantro in and serve it over some rice and you have got an awesome slow cooker meal. It is so stinking good. Definitely try this. The next chicken slow cooker dish we are going to make is chicken gnocchi soup. And I believe this is on the menu at Olive Garden, although I've not been to Olive Garden in quite a while. So uh, I cannot confirm that personally, but I do believe it is. But this is kind of a copycat recipe. I've made it before. It is a slow cooker recipe and it's really good and kid friendly. And you can kind of omit and add things as you like to your tastes. So the ingredients you'll need are four cups of chicken broth. I have that in my measuring cup here. I've used the better than bouillon chicken base. I also have some dried seasonings here. I have some dried basil, some Italian seasoning, and then the original recipe called for poultry seasoning, but I am going to use this everything but the leftovers seasoning blend, which is sort of like a turkey inspired seasoning blend, which I think will work just fine with the chicken. I have some salt and pepper, some onion, celery, and carrot we'll be dicing that up for the soup I have a little over a pound of chicken breast here that I've diced up and then to thicken the soup we'll need some cornstarch I also have two cans of evaporated milk some garlic some bacon bits these are optional but you can use them if you like I do think they add a little bit of um, added flavor to the dish and then I have a 17 ounce package of potato gnocchi this has been frozen um, the original recipe, I believe, calls for two 12-ounce packages of gnocchi. I'll link it down below, but I have found that that's honestly too much. Once this gnocchi cooks and expands, it really sort of bulks up the dish. And so, I, in my opinion, if you added two packages, it would really just make it into a chicken and dumplings dish and not a soup. But you could definitely do that if you wanted. And then it also calls for some baby spinach kind of stirred in at the end to wilt it. Okay, so we need a, a mirepoix or uh, carrots, onion, and celery for this dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop those up right now. I don't know about you guys, but I always feel like chopping vegetables is sort of like a therapeutic uh, experience. I honestly learned to use a chef's knife when I watched Food Network in high school and college. I was in college in the early 2000s and I watched Rachel Ray and Ina Garden and who else? Oh, Sandra Lee who, you know, she dumped vodka and everything, but that's fine. <laughs> Two shots of vodka. Oh, and Emerald, you know, but honestly, the more that I was able to watch those chefs um, utilizing a chef's knife properly on TV, 
the more I was able to do it myself. Ultimately, I learned to cook when I was a kid, but also I watched a lot of Food Network and the like in college, and that was really when I started to sort of develop my love for, for cooking. And I, you know, I can remember searching the grocery store for some of these ingredients that these chefs were using at the time, like, you know, sun-dried sun tomatoes and capers and just different things like these. And, and these were just not ingredients that we had um, in, in the Midwest. And so I feel like, you know, we've come a long way in terms of having... Uh, you know specialty ingredients that are accessible but you know in my town of about 23,000 people there are still a lot of ingredients that are hard you know harder to find so I think that there are actually some mirepoix mixes that are available that you can get in the freezer section I personally have never purchased those because I just think it's always simple enough to chop up your own and I always you know enjoy using my knife to chop things this is a mizen knife and I have obviously showcased their knives in the past and many of you have purchased them but I still recommend them to this day I have never gotten these knives you know either sharpened here or professionally sharpened I do not put them in the dishwasher and I think that makes a huge difference in terms of you know maintaining the quality of the knife but also being able to cut an onion was one of the things that I learned watching Food Network. Now that I've blabbed to you so much, here's my mirepoix. All right, so now that we've got everything chopped, we're gonna put everything in the slow cooker. So I have my chicken here that's diced up. I'm gonna put that in. Also, what I was gonna say too, if you have chicken that's partially frozen and you wanna put it in the slow cooker, that's totally fine. The, the slow cooker is gonna help defrost it and cook it until it's tender, so don't worry about that. We're also gonna put our mirepoix or our celery, onion, and carrot. Next, we'll put our four cups of chicken broth or stock, whatever you want to use. We're going to do about one teaspoon of dried basil, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Dried herbs are very strong, so make sure you err on the side of caution with those because if you add too much, you cannot take it out. And then the poultry seasoning, I'm going to use about one teaspoon of that as well. I believe regular poultry seasoning is basically just kind of like a sage mixture. Um, and I may have some in the back of my cabinet. I'm just not willing to search for it <laughs> right now. The last thing we're going to add is one teaspoon of kosher salt. And then that is it. So we're just going to cook this on high for about four hours. Um, and then after that, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. I'll show you when we do it, but we'll add the milk and the gnocchi and, and everything else. But you don't want to add that at the beginning, um, obviously, because it doesn't take that long to cook. All right, so here's what the chicken and veggie and broth mixture looks like after this has cooked on high for about three to four hours. So I'm going to stir in, this is three tablespoons of cornstarch mixed with two tablespoons of water. And then I'm going to stir in two cans of evaporated milk. Please make sure you use evaporated milk and not sweetened condensed milk. I've seen that, I've seen that mistake made before and it is not the same ingredient. Sweetened condensed milk is very syrupy. Okay, and then I'm going to stir this around, so I'm just going to use one one pound package of potato gnocchi okay so i'm gonna put the lid back on this and cook it for another about 45 minutes to one hour on high until it's thickened and the gnocchi are done and then it says at the end if you need to stir in a little bit of water to thin it out you can do that too okay so this has been cooking for about an hour and you can see that it has thickened up really nicely if you've never cooked with evaporated milk before it's actually a really good way to add like a creaminess to dishes without adding heavy cream and it has like way less fat and calories but i mean i've used it before in like macaroni and cheese recipes and stuff like that but anyway um this is done now so i'm gonna add the spinach the recipe calls for five ounces of spinach i'm gonna add i think this is a six ounce bag i'm probably gonna add half of this and then kind of see how that looks all right so here's our completed chicken gnocchi soup i did use about three quarters of the bag of spinach. Like I said, I've made this recipe before and it's always super delicious. I would definitely 
recommend it. You can obviously leave out like certain veggies or the spinach if you want, like if you have, you know, super picky kids or something like that. But flavor is delicious and I would definitely recommend this particular chicken slow cooker meal. So I think sometimes we associate slow cooker meals with like a very uh, bland, mushy meal, but I'm excited to try this one. This is out of the same America's Test Kitchen cookbook and it is the Greek chicken with warm tabbouleh. So here are the ingredients you're gonna need. I have one cup of bulgur wheat that has been rinsed. I have some salt and pepper. I have some chicken broth, one cup. I just use this better than bouillon roasted chicken base. It's really good. You can keep it in your refrigerator and then reconstitute it as needed. I have some garlic, two lemons. I'm gonna need some juice and zest off of those. Three tablespoons of olive oil, some cherry tomatoes, some Greek yogurt. I'm using whole milk Greek yogurt. And then I have two large uh, bone-in chicken breasts. I got these from Thrive Market in one of their organic chicken boxes. It's really good chicken. I also have some parsley. I like to wash this up ahead of time on the weekends and then I just wrap it in paper towels and keep it in the refrigerator for when I need it. And then I also have some fresh oregano. So we're gonna microwave the aromatics. So I need about one tablespoon of oregano. I was just watching a cooking video last night from someone in the UK and they say oregano. So whatever you prefer to call it. Honestly, this is gonna sound bad, but it even surprises, it surprises me when I can find fresh herbs in my town like this. I know, it's sad, right? One day maybe I'll live in a town where there is a Whole Foods, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna chop this up. It smells really good. I need to get my herb garden taken care of for this summer. I'll film that for you guys probably in a weekend prep video, so. This is about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna put it in this bowl. And then to this, we're gonna add one tablespoon of olive oil. So I'm just gonna pour that out of there. And then we need one teaspoon of lemon zest. So I'm gonna use my microplane again. The other things I need in here are some garlic, just about one clove of minced garlic. If you've never tried this stir-in paste before, it's really, really convenient. I like this better than like the minced garlic in oil that you can find in the grocery store. I think it tastes fresher. Um, and then I'm gonna need about half a teaspoon of salt, I'll just measure with my heart, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Sometimes I get questions on this pepper grinder. I can link it down below. I got it on Amazon. I actually ordered this. I had seen Ina Garten use it in her cooking shows like for so many years. And when I was writing a cookbook and I had to precisely measure ground pepper, that's when I got this because you can grind it into here and then measure the pepper. So I'm just gonna stir this up and then it just says to microwave this for about 30 seconds. So we're just gonna kind of get a little bit of heat on it and get some of that flavor out. I've got my slow cooker here and the recipe says to just lightly coat this with a little bit of cooking spray and then I'm going to add the bulgur wheat that I rinsed. Um, if you're looking for this, usually find it in your grocery store in the specialty food section. I think Bob's Red Mill has a brand. Um, I'm going to add the one cup of chicken broth. I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. All right, I'm just gonna give this a quick stir to make sure that all of the grains are covered. And then the original recipe calls for four uh, bone-in chicken breasts. I'm just gonna use two because I don't know if this is something that my whole family is gonna eat. So we're just gonna do two. Plus I'm using a smaller slow cooker, so it'll be fine. And then I'm gonna take this uh, mixture that I microwaved earlier with the oregano and just use it to rub the chicken with. I do like the idea of cooking with, you know, fresh herbs in the slow cooker. Okay, so I'm gonna cover this and then cook this on low for two to three hours. Uh, probably around two and a half hours, this slow cooker tends to run hot, so I'll see you in a little bit. While the chicken is in the slow cooker, we're gonna go ahead and make the yogurt sauce that goes on top of it. So the recipe calls for about half a cup of chopped parsley, and I also have some additional oregano here, about a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna mince this up. I love these flavors. Any type of sauce that has like garlic and yogurt and mint and parsley, 
I totally love it. So I'm really looking forward to trying this because like I said, I think it's gonna add a lot of fresh flavor to an otherwise sort of like, you know, very bland slow cooker dish. I know a lot of times people can tend to avoid crock pot meals just because, you know, when they come out, they can be mushy, but I really like this cookbook because it sort of provides a strategy for making, you know, super fresh meals using the crock pot that aren't necessarily just like, like I said, like dumping cans into it. So I've got my herbs in here. I'm going to use one half cup of plain uh, whole milk Greek yogurt. I need about a quarter teaspoon of lemon zest, so I'm just gonna use this remaining lemon zest. About three tablespoons of water just to thin the sauce out. Okay, I'm gonna season this with some salt and some pepper. And then I'm gonna whisk this together. And then once this is combined, I'll just store it in the refrigerator until it is time to eat. All right, so here is the tabbouleh that is in the slow cooker, and then we have chicken breast that is finished here. So I put the rest of the ingredients in this bowl here, which is tomatoes and parsley and lemon juice and olive oil. So I'm just gonna give this a stir really quick. Delicious. All right, so here's what the Greek chicken with the warm tabbouleh turned out like. I decided to put this in some meal prep containers and then I put this yogurt sauce on the side because obviously you don't want to heat this up. Um, but this has yogurt and mint and parsley and garlic, lemon juice, salt and pepper, super delicious. Um, and then the warm tabbouleh with the cherry tomatoes. So this will be uh, really good for some lunches this week. And I can hardly believe this is a slow cooker meal. We are making pulled barbecue sweet and tangy chicken sandwiches. So this is out of the America's Test Kitchen slow cooker cookbook, sweet and tangy pulled chicken. So the original recipe called for bone in chicken breasts, but I already had these chicken breasts thawed. So we're gonna go ahead and use those and it will be fine. You also need some molasses, one onion, some tomato paste. I have a can of tomato paste, so I'm gonna have to save the rest. I have some chili powder, some paprika, a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil, salt, pepper, some apple cider vinegar, some cayenne pepper, some Thrive Market organic mustard, and one quarter cup of ketchup. So let's get started in the slow cooker. So the first thing we are going to do is uh, microwave our aromatics. We did on the other recipes. So I have a large yellow onion here. There's Murphy Bark, and he wants to come in. So we're going to microwave our aromatics like we did in some of the other recipes. So I'm going to put my chopped onion into this microwave safe bowl. I really would recommend this cookbook. Um, you guys know I love America's Test Kitchen cookbooks. The next thing we need is a quarter cup of tomato paste. I'm gonna eyeball this for the most part. A quarter cup is four tablespoons, so. I mean, this is a, a barbecue recipe. All right, we need one tablespoon of chili powder. I got this huge jar of chili powder at uh, hy V because I was always running out, and so I figured a big container like this would last me a while. All right, so we're gonna put the vegetable oil in here. One teaspoon of paprika. This is just regular paprika, which I can get in my regular grocery store. I cannot get smoked paprika anywhere around here. I always have to get it at Trader Joe's. We're gonna do one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne and some salt and pepper. All right, so I'm gonna mix this together and then I will microwave this for about five minutes. I'll probably stir it about halfway through. This is kind of a small bowl <laughs> for what I needed it for, but I didn't realize the onion was that large. So, okay, we'll see you back in a second. All right, so I have my slow cooker insert here. I'm just gonna spray this with some canola oil spray, which seems like it is uh, deteriorating. Oh my God, that's hot. The next thing that I'm going to do is put my uh, onion mixture into the slow cooker, which is super hot, even though I did not microwave it for that long. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna stir in the molasses and the ketchup, which is going to basically make our barbecue sauce, and then 
some ketchup here. All right, so I'm gonna stir this up and then I'm gonna add my chicken and get it coated into the mixture. All right, so I've got the uh, chicken breasts in here and I have covered the uh, chicken breasts with the sauce. So I'm gonna cook this on low for three hours and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so here's our pulled chicken. We're gonna go ahead and uh, remove this from the slow cooker. So to the sauce, we're gonna add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and two tablespoons of Dijon mustard and we're just gonna give this a stir and then I'll go ahead and shred the chicken and put it back in with the sauce. Okay, so I shredded up my chicken. I'm just gonna stir this in with the sauce and then we'll plate it up. It smells really good. All right, so here is our sweet and tangy pulled chicken. It turned out really good. Um, definitely more unique flavors than just, you know, dumping a bottle of barbecue sauce into there. I would totally recommend this recipe. So I just have it on one of the Hawaiian uh, kind of sub rolls. I had one left of those to use it up. So this is what Connor's going to eat for lunch today. And then some chips and some pickles on the side. So definitely try this one out. It is delicious. So since I live in a super small town, I don't often get the chance to go to Whole Foods, but when I do, I really love to kind of peruse and take my time. And one of the items that I really love getting there is the Sonoma chicken salad, along with many of their other options in the deli section. I just find that really everything is good. Their pasta salads, their chicken salad. But today I thought I would share with you guys a copycat recipe for the Sonoma chicken salad, which is really good. I'm going to start out with the Sonoma chicken salad. And first I need to cook my chicken because obviously I need to cool it before I mix it with the dressing. So I have some chicken breast here. Um, I got this from Thrive. The recipe that I'm using is out of one of the Whole Foods cookbooks, which I can link down below. You can find it on Amazon. So I'm just going to put the chicken in here. And this is really not a method I've used to cook chicken before, but we'll see. But basically you put the chicken breast in there, season it, add half a cup of water, and then um, cover it with foil and bake it in the oven like that. So I season these with salt and pepper and I'm just gonna add half a cup of water. And then I'll bake this at 375. I believe the cookbook says for about 25 minutes cover it first. Okay, so here's the chicken after it baked for 25 minutes. So I'm just kind of letting it cool a little bit. I'm going to chop it up. Well, yeah, kind of like dice it into smallish cubes. And then I'll put it in the fridge to cool while we make the dressing. So here are all the ingredients for the Sonoma chicken salad. So I've got my chicken here that's been chilled now in the fridge. I've got some pecans, some grapes that I have, celery, salt and pepper and then for the dressing um, this is my favorite honey I get it from Thrive it's the organic wildflower honey and then some poppy seeds I also get these from Thrive they come in a bag so then I just put them um, in a mason jar some of this avocado oil mayo and some apple cider vinegar for the dressing I'm gonna need one cup of mayo which is the rest of this jar five tablespoons of honey i rarely ever measure honey because i don't like getting the <laughs> utensils dirty four teaspoons of cider vinegar and then two teaspoons of poppy seeds add some pepper and some salt all right, so I'm gonna add my chicken, and then I'm gonna add the grapes, and then I need to chop up the celery. all of this together I put my pecans in there grapes celery the chicken it smells really good all right so here is the completed Sonoma chicken salad it's really really good uh, I definitely think that this is a recipe that needs to sit in the refrigerator 
you know, to get the full uh, experience and have the flavors meld together. But on first taste, it's it's really good. I would honestly eat this any day over the stuff in the store. So definitely recommend this recipe. I'm actually gonna um, probably portion this out into some containers um, so Adam can take it to work this week. So today we are going to be making a slow cooker cream cheese crack chicken chili. Long name, delicious recipe. I'm also going to be making a slow simmered meat ragu, which has both sausage and chicken in it. Some chicken Alfredo broccoli shells, a freezer chicken cordon bleu, and then also some homemade chicken pot pie. So let me show you first all of the groceries that I have gathered up to make these recipes. I'm also going to be showing you the completed recipes in this video because I think that's really important for you guys to know whether or not we like them, uh, you know, what we thought of the recipes and how they turned out. And so you can see that before you decide whether or not you are going to make it for yourself. So let's get into it. All right, so here are all of the ingredients that I'm going to need for my chicken freezer meals. So I have two large packages of chicken breasts that I got at Walmart. I probably won't need all of these, but I went ahead and got two. Uh, this is the best price for chicken breasts usually in my area is $1.99 a pound at Walmart, so I grabbed that. Um, I also have some mixed vegetables for the chicken pot pie, some cream cheese, some Parmesan cheese, shredded mozzarella, and shredded cheddar some pie crust for the chicken pot pie, um, two onions that I'll chop up and use in the recipes, some broccoli for the chicken broccoli Alfredo shells, some jumbo shells, two jars of Alfredo. Um, some of the recipes call for chicken broth, but I usually keep this chicken bouillon on hand and then I just mix it with hot water for chicken broth. Some spices, so cumin, onion powder, chili powder, uh, oregano and some poultry seasoning and then for the crack uh, chicken chili I have black beans whole kernel corn and uh, mild rotel I have some breadcrumbs for the chicken cordon bleu panko and regular uh, some Dijon mustard hot sauce uh, for the marinara sauce I have tomato basil sauce some Italian diced tomatoes some regular tomato sauce and some pesto um, one red pepper, turkey pepperoni, some Italian sausage, some eggs. Uh, the cracked chicken soup recipe calls for cooked bacon. I have some in my refrigerator already, so I might just use this. I also have some extra bacon if I need that. And then for the chicken cordon bleu, um, Swiss cheese, and sliced ham. So let's get started on these chicken freezer meals. All right, so most of the recipes in this video call for raw chicken breast, but there were a couple that called for cooked cubed chicken breast. And so I'm just going to get these prepped up really quick. I have some chicken breasts here that I am sauteing in olive oil with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And I'm not going to saute these cooking them through. You can see they're rather thick chicken breasts, but what I will do is brown them on either side. And then I like to add a little bit of chicken broth, or you could add a little bit of water. Um, to cook them through the rest of the way. So, well, actually I'm adding water, not chicken broth. <laughs> and then I'll just put the lid on and simmer these slowly until they are cooked through. If I would have had more time, um, I probably would have liked to cook these in the crock pot be because they would have been a little bit more tender, but you could do it either way. Or if you wanted to order a, or not order, but buy a rotisserie chicken, you can definitely do that as well. So once the chicken breasts were cooked up, I'm just going to cube those up and get them into a large measuring cup to make sure that I have enough for all of my recipes. Make sure that you season the meat well because this will be going in your freezer meal dishes and you don't want them to be bland. Okay, so the first recipe that I'm going to share with you is this slow cooker cream cheese crack chicken chili. Yes, 
It is a long name, but it is a delicious recipe. This was our favorite out of all of these that I made. This is from plainchicken.com. So I will link all of these recipes down below if you guys want to try them out. Um, so what you'll need for this is some chicken broth. Like I said, I do freeze chicken broth, but I don't always have the time to thaw it out um, and I don't always plan ahead properly. And so in this case, I'm just using some of the Knorr chicken broth um, or chicken bouillon that I keep on hand and I just mixed up one cup of that. So I labeled my Ziploc bag and I have these bag holders. I've talked about them before in freezer meal videos and I get them on Amazon. They are fantastic and super inexpensive. I will link them down below. So I added two chicken breasts to my bag along with one can of corn, one can of black beans, and one can of rotel. Um, I went ahead and added the chicken broth along with some chopped and cooked bacon. So if you didn't want to cook your own bacon, I think you could definitely add uh, bacon bits to this and it would taste you know, just, just as good. Um, since I happen to have this leftover bacon in the refrigerator, it was convenient for me just to chop it up so that I could get it used up. Next, you'll add your seasonings. So this calls for a one ounce packet of Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning, but I always have the large container of it that I get at Costco. So I just added the equivalent. It will say on the jar what the equivalent of that is. It also calls for one teaspoon of cumin, one tablespoon of chili powder, uh, one teaspoon of onion powder, and then an eight ounce packet of cream cheese. So the closest thing I can tell you that this tastes like is like a chicken queso and it is delicious. Um, when you cook it up in the slow cooker, you kind of have to whisk it together a little bit, but it makes a nice creamy texture and it's really good. Um, we liked it with like cheese and green onions on top. You could put sour cream, crushed up chips, cilantro, whatever you like, but I definitely would recommend this recipe and it is great as a freezer meal. Okay, so the next recipe I'm showing you is a slow simmered meat ragu that has chicken in it. Uh, this recipe is from tasteofhome.com and I like this because not only did it have chicken in it, but it also had Italian sausage. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get my veggies chopped up for this. Now this recipe, you're essentially combining everything in a large um, freezer bag and then freezing it. And then when you wanna use it, you just dump everything into the slow cooker, simmer it all day and then serve it up with pasta. Okay, so this recipe calls for one red bell pepper chopped up and one onion chopped up. It also calls for um, some chopped mushrooms, but most of us here don't like those, and so I went ahead and left those out. The nice thing about this recipe is that you don't even have to saute the veggies because it's obviously all going to cook in the slow cooker, so you can just put them in as is. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my bag and start layering in the ingredients. Um, I always just like to put in the... Um, like the chopped or the dry ingredients first. That way when I pour the liquid ingredients over into the bag, it's easier to mix everything up. So once I get the vegetables in there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my other ingredients. So it calls for one jar of tomato basil marinara. I'm just using uh, one of the Walmart brands of tomato sauce and I just like to put a little bit of water in there shake it up and pour out the extra so I don't waste any. Um, it also calls for a can of Italian flavored diced tomatoes, which I added, and then one can or eight ounces of tomato sauce. Um, I think the other unique thing about this recipe is it calls for some pesto, which gives it a really great flavor. So I added that as well. Um, and then next I added in my chicken breast. So I just added two um, sort of medium sized chicken breasts and then I'm chopping up my pepperoni. So it calls for one half cup of chopped pepperoni. I am using uh, turkey pepperoni, but you could use regular if you wanted. I tend to like to use the turkey pepperoni because it has less grease. Um, next, I'm gonna add some oregano. So one teaspoon of dried oregano. And then it also calls for about half a teaspoon of hot sauce. So I just use Tabasco. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so next I'm going to put in some Italian sausage. So I just kind of cut this into large chunks and I'm putting it into the bag. Obviously these will cook in the sauce as it slow cooks all day. So I went ahead and sealed this up and then I'm just going to give it a good shake, which <laughs> honestly this always makes me nervous that the bag is gonna come busting open, but I did wanna make sure I mixed everything together. So to cook this, you can just put it in the slow cooker for eight hours on low. And I just served this over some pasta with some broccoli and some Parmesan cheese on top. I think if I made this again, I would use chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts, but it was really good. Okay, so the next recipe I'm gonna show you is some chicken broccoli Alfredo shells. This was also another favorite of ours of these five meals that I made. So I'm going to start out by boiling my shells. These are just large um, shells. I get the Barilla brand, I find them at Walmart. And you just wanna boil these until they are uh, mostly tender. Do not overcook them because you're going to stuff these and put them in the freezer. And then you're gonna end up baking them, obviously when you wanna eat them and so just, Make sure that you don't overcook them, otherwise they will get super gummy and fall apart in your dish. So once these were cooked, I'm just going to remove them to a tray that I have lined with foil with a little bit of cooking spray. The reason I do this is so that I can put them in a single layer and they don't stick together. Um, that way they can cool off before I go ahead and stuff them with my meat mixture. Okay, so to assemble the shells, I'm gonna put two cups of cooked chicken in a bowl along with two cups of cooked broccoli. I just steamed some fresh broccoli in the microwave. And then I added one jar of Alfredo sauce along with some shredded cheddar cheese. Now the original recipe only called for one jar of Alfredo sauce for the whole dish, but I was afraid it was gonna be dry if I didn't use more. And so I ended up using two jars of Alfredo. Um, so I would definitely recommend that if you're going to make this dish because it was um, extra creamy when we baked it up. And I think without that, it would have been dry. Um, so I also added some Parmesan cheese to the mixture. And next I'm going to assemble my shells. So I'm using one of these Glad freezer containers. Um, you just have to be careful with these because you can, I think you can only use them up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit since they're not like a metal pan. Uh, but I do like using them. They clean up really well. So what I did was just spread a little bit of Alfredo sauce in the bottom so the shells wouldn't stick. And then I'm just using a large um, tablespoon to stuff the shells with the chicken and broccoli mixture and putting those in the pan. Uh, we made these the other night and they were so so, so good. I was actually really impressed with how flavorful they were. Both my kids liked them. Um, Adam really liked them. I think that it's just one of those meals that has things that everyone likes. Like everyone in this house likes chicken and broccoli and cheese. Um, and just to have those in a stuffed pasta shell was really unique. So I'm just going to keep assembling these and then I will top them with a little bit more sauce before I get them in the freezer. All right, so this is what the dish looks like assembled. I just topped it with more Alfredo sauce and a little bit more shredded cheese. When you cook this, you'll want to thaw it in the, refrigerator, in the refrigerator, excuse me, or partially thaw it. Then you can cook it covered at 350 until it is nice and bubbly. And then at the end, I took the foil off just so it, the cheese could brown up a little bit. But seriously would recommend this recipe. It was so good. Okay, so the next chicken freezer meal I'm sharing is a chicken cordon bleu. I was super excited to make this because I feel like I haven't made it in so long and I love chicken cordon bleu. So I just have some of my raw chicken breasts here that I uh, filleted sort of horizontally so that I could spread them open kind of like you spread open a book and then stuff the ham and the cheese inside. So I just have four kind of rather large chicken breasts here. You could prep as many of these as you wanted. And I'm layering the deli ham inside along with about a piece and a half to two pieces of the Swiss cheese. So for this chicken, you'll actually um, bread it and then freeze it. And then when you bake it, um, I um, 
poured some melted butter on it before I baked it and it turned out crispy and delicious. So in this bowl, I just have some egg uh, whipped up with a little bit of half and half and some Dijon mustard that will help our breadcrumbs stick to uh, the chicken. So in it with my breadcrumbs, I'm just adding some um, seasoned salt and some flour and then I'll go ahead and mix that up and that is what will uh, bread our chicken. So I am using a mixture of panko and regular breadcrumbs which is what the recipe called for. I think you could probably use either panko or regular breadcrumbs and it would be fine. So to assemble these I'm just going to uh, place the chicken into the egg wash and then roll it into the breadcrumb mixture and place them into a freezer pan. Um, I was actually a little bit, I, like, I, I knew this recipe was going to be good, but I was a little bit hesitant because I didn't know if it would crisp up in the oven. And I think the tip of melting some butter and drizzling it over um, the chicken before baking it is definitely one that you should use. The original recipe didn't call for that, but anytime I want to crisp something up in the oven, I always do that. Either spray it with cooking spray or... Um, with you know with melted butter I think also you could do these in the air fryer and they would be good and it's nice because you don't have to mess around with like you know toothpicks or anything like that so here's what's it, what it looks like baked up I went ahead and sliced it up so you guys can see the inside this was definitely a keeper I will be making this recipe again it was a crowd pleaser I just served this with a simple salad on the side Okay, so last but not least, I'm showing you a really good recipe for chicken pot pie. The whole family loved this. I made enough to make it several times. Um, and one weekend we had it like at least three times <laughs> that weekend and it was really, really good. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is dice up a yellow onion. Um, I'll go ahead and saute this in some butter and that is what we will use to start making our roux mixture to thicken um, the gravy that goes in with the chicken pot pie. So as soon as I'm done at chopping up this onion, I'm just going to get it into a pot with some olive oil and butter to saute. Okay, so once the onions are tender, I went ahead and added the flour, and then I'm going to add some poultry seasoning. And you just need to cook this for a little bit. Make sure that you don't burn it, but it is nice to kind of cook some of the raw flavor out of the flour. Next, I am adding some chicken broth and then also some milk. So essentially, you're, you're kind of making your own cream of chicken soup um, in a way here because you're using both milk and chicken broth, but if you're intimidated by making chicken pot pie, don't be, because it's super easy, especially when you do it like I did and use the pre-made pie crust. There's really no way that you can screw it up. So um, if I didn't mention before, this recipe is also from Taste of Home. Um, I love their website and I get their magazine also, and I always find that they have such great recipes. So after the uh, gravy mixture is thickened, you can go ahead and add the rest of your ingredients. So I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And next, I will add um, two cups or I'm sorry three cups of cubed cooked chicken and then you can add some mixed vegetables so I'm just using frozen mixed vegetables if you didn't have that on hand and wanted to use canned um, I think that might work you might just want to be careful not to get them too mushy in the sauce um, you could also add some chopped cooked potatoes that would be really good in here I seem to remember having pot pie when I was a kid with cooked potatoes and I always really liked that so to make these, I'm gonna use some smaller loaf pans. I got these at Walmart in a three pack. I like making them like this because if there's some night that I just wanna make one for me or Adam, or you know, one for me and Adam or one for the kids or something like that. I'm not, you know, cooking a huge batch of chicken pot pie and, and wasting it. So I'm just splitting this into the containers and next I will add my crust to the top. So like I said, I'm just using uh, pre-made pie crust for this. It is um, just the, well I, well, I can't remember if I got the Walmart brand or the Pillsbury brand. You guys would have saw it in the grocery haul. Um, but basically you just kind of fit it over the top of the pan. You could either, you know, you could use a pie plate too if you wanted to. And then I'm just cutting a couple of slits in the top so that the steam can come out and then brushing it with egg wash. And then that's it. Basically you just pop these in the freezer as is. When you want to cook them, 
Um, I would take them out and probably thaw them partially. Um, you could probably put them in the oven totally frozen, but you'd want to cook it at a lower temperature for longer so that the filling has time to heat up and the crust doesn't burn. Um, but these were really good and simple. I would definitely recommend this recipe. Um, this is probably how I will be making chicken pot pie from now on. So you can see here that it is nice and creamy on the inside. I just did a test one for you in a ramekin <laughs> to make sure it was good. Um, but yeah, these did turn out really good. I just chopped it or topped it with some fresh herbs. Okay, so here are all of my chicken breast freezer meals completed. I have two uh, chicken pot pies here. Again, I decided to split these out into smaller containers um, just to make sure that I didn't cook a big one and waste them. So I'll cover these up with foil and get them in the freezer. I have my slow cooker crack chicken chili. Again, this was my favorite recipe out of all of them. So definitely make sure that you try that. Here is the slow cooker chicken ragu. So both of these, what I'll do when I'm ready to make them is just run the bag under some hot water, just enough to kind of loosen the food inside from the bag, pop it in the slow cooker and cook it on low all day and it will be ready to go. Uh, in this container, I have my chicken broccoli Alfredo shells. These are gonna be a huge hit with my kids. They are delicious. And then my chicken cordon bleu. So for this one, I'll just thaw, bake it up 400 for 50 to 55 minutes. Next up, I am sharing three freezer meals that can be made that are healthy with minimally processed ingredients. I'm going to be making a really delicious buffalo chicken casserole, as well as a potato soup that is dairy and grain free, and also a chicken curry that's really healthy and delicious. All right, so the first freezer meal that we're going to make is a potato soup, and I'll be linking all of these recipes down below. I do have some foil pans here that I'm going to be putting some of the dishes in, but I also may be using my super cubes for some recipes, I'll kind of just play it by ear. So these are the ingredients that you'll need for this recipe. This recipe is Whole30 and paleo compliant. If you eat potatoes while you're doing paleo, I know that's sometimes like a controversial subject, but at any rate, all whole foods. So we have one onion. We'll need four cloves of garlic. So we have some of this garlic stir in paste, some chicken broth. I got this from Thrive, some tapioca flour. You can also use arrowroot flour. Thrive is the best place and my favorite place to get all types of different specialty flours. So any types of like nut flour or other types of specialty ingredients that you can't find elsewhere. I always get them from Thrive. I have a can of coconut milk, some nutritional yeast, salt and pepper. I also got this Malden sea salt from Thrive. I really like it. Three pounds of russet potatoes, some green onions, and some smoked bacon, one pound of that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is saute my bacon. So you wanna just cut your bacon into basically like one inch pieces. So just take it out of the package, leave it all together and slice it across, super easy. And then we're gonna saute this in a soup pot. I'm just gonna use this Dutch oven that I have. Once the bacon is crisp, we'll remove the bacon pieces from the Dutch oven and then use the bacon fat to saute the onion. Okay, so I've got one white, or, oh, I guess it's a yellow. <laughs> I was gonna say one white onion, but I guess it's a yellow onion. So I'm going to chop this up while I'm waiting for the bacon to cook and then we'll get that into the soup and then I also need to peel and chop my potatoes. I think sometimes when you think about freezer meals, you don't necessarily always think about soup, but soup is honestly a great thing to make ahead and freeze just because so many soups actually taste better <laughs> as they sit for example chili i always think tastes better as leftovers and potato soup freezes quite well and since this particular recipe doesn't have any dairy in it we're not going to have to worry about it you know curdling or separating or anything like that once you thaw it out and reheat it So you can see here that my bacon is crisped up now. This does take quite a bit of time, like, well, I mean, maybe like 20, 25 minutes. So just don't rush it, cook it over medium so that it gets nice and crispy. So I'm just going to remove this to a plate to drain. And then I'm gonna add my onions in here and just saute those for about five minutes. Okay, next I'm gonna add some garlic, maybe 
don't know, about four teaspoons will be four cloves worth. And I'm just gonna stir this around just a little bit and then put the potatoes in. Okay, so I've added my potatoes and I'm just going to toss those to coat them with the onions and the garlic. And then I'm gonna add three tablespoons of tapioca flour and this will help thicken the soup. Normally, obviously you'd probably add, you know, regular white flour if you we're using a different recipe, which if you don't have tapioca flour and you're not, you know, following paleo, that would work just fine too. Okay, next I'm gonna add my chicken broth, four cups of this, so one box, or you could use homemade chicken stock or broth if you have that on hand too. And then one can of full fat coconut milk. Okay, so in this bowl here, I have three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. If you've never cooked with that before, it just kind of gives things a little bit of a cheesy flavor without adding any dairy. And then I have some sea salt and some black pepper. So I'm gonna stir this in, and likely I will have to adjust the seasonings once you know it gets cooked. I might have to add more salt or more pepper. So I'm gonna stir this up, put the lid on, and then I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes until the potatoes are tender. Okay, so the potatoes are tender, and the soup has thickened so I have my immersion blender here I can link the one that I have down below they're not that expensive and I would definitely recommend having one they're super useful for stuff like this if you don't have an immersion blender you can also transfer half of the soup to a regular blender blend it up and pour it back in you just want to leave some of the potatoes chunky but maybe puree about half of them to thicken the soup a little bit okay so this is now pureed but I did leave the you know some potatoes potato chunks in there obviously. Now I'm gonna add, I don't know, maybe about half of the bacon back into the soup and then I'm gonna stir that in and taste it. You wanna add the bacon back in first to make sure that it's not too salty and then give it a taste add salt and pepper. So I just had to add a little bit of extra salt and pepper. Other than that, it was pretty spot on. I really like this soup, it's delicious. Definitely recommend this recipe for sure. Okay, so for the potato soup, I'm actually gonna freeze about half of it in these super cubes, and then I'm probably just gonna let it cool and freeze the other half in like a gallon Ziploc bag. But if you've never seen these before, they're super convenient for freezer meals. I'll link them down below. These are the one cup portion super cubes, but they also have other sizes as well. I believe they have half cup and two cup, but what I normally do is just use a measuring cup to fill these, and then when they freeze, this is made out of silicone. You can end up just popping them right out from the freezer, and it's super convenient because you can take out as many as you need. So for example, if you just wanna do like one for a lunch for yourself, you can do that, heat it up in the microwave, or you could pop out several, you know, put them in a saucepan and cook them up for a larger meal as well. So definitely recommend these. I got the idea from these from Erin Branscombe. I can link her page down below as well. And the great thing too is that they have this kind of hard lid on them. So you can stack them up in your freezer and it works out super well. So you can see I made a mess here. I'm gonna wipe some of this up before <laughs> I freeze it. But this potato soup turned out so good. Looking forward to eating it. Definitely recommend it. Okay, so the next meal that we're gonna make is a chicken curry, and any type of curry makes a great freezer meal because honestly, I think curry is one of the things that tastes better as it sits for a little bit. So this is out of the Ready or Not Nom Nom Paleo cookbook. I can link it down below. It's on page 286. I really love this cookbook, by the way, because it has tons of pictures. It's awesome. So for this recipe, I'm going to use some of this organic chicken breast that I got from Thrive. Some broccoli, a red pepper. I'm gonna put a couple of potatoes in my curry you don't have to do that that's how I always make it so I'm gonna add those lime some onion some cilantro unsweetened apple juice some fish sauce you can get this on thrive as well as the curry paste I have two different options here I have a yellow curry paste and a green curry paste I think I'm gonna use the yellow today two cans of coconut milk some garlic salt and pepper all right so I've got my chicken breast here and I just cut this up into small chunks the original recipe actually calls for chicken thighs but I prefer chicken breast so that's what I'm gonna use so I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of the sea salt and some pepper I'm gonna set this aside while I chop up the onion. Okay, so I've got a big pot here. I'm gonna put some avocado oil in it. That big of a pot is probably overkill, but that's what I have, so 
we're gonna work with it. And then I'm gonna add my onion and pepper. And then after those saute for a little bit, I'll add the garlic. All right, I added the garlic, so I'm gonna add my chicken now. And you don't necessarily have to cook the chicken through because you are going to simmer it with the curry sauce. So I'm just gonna kind of brown it up on all sides. All right, so the chicken is mostly done. I went ahead and put my curry paste in here and I'm just gonna stir that around. You always wanna kind of toast your curry paste to wake up the flavor of it a little bit so I'm just gonna kind of let that melt down and I'll put in the rest of the veggies Okay, so this is the combination of the fish sauce and the apple juice. So I'm gonna add that. Last step is to add the coconut milk. I recommend using the full fat coconut milk instead of the fat free. It tastes a lot better and it has a better texture as well. So I'm gonna stir this up, make sure all of the curry paste and the seasonings and everything are incorporated. And then I'm gonna put a lid on this and simmer it for about 20 minutes until the potatoes and broccoli are tender and the chicken is cooked through. All right, so here is the completed curry this turned out so perfect so if I was gonna eat this I would probably just eat it plain or maybe with some cauliflower rice you could serve it also with regular rice the flavor was just about perfect I added just a little bit of extra salt I also think it could use a little bit more spice if you like it spicy but if you don't this is perfect okay so for the chicken curry I just packed this up into one of these freezer pans and I'll just freeze this obviously it will freeze solid when I'm ready to make it I can thaw it out in the refrigerator and heat it up either in the crock pot or on the stove or you can also just leave it covered and warm it up slowly in the oven. I did also wash up some cilantro which at the end the recipe directs you to stir in lime juice, cilantro, and basil. I did stir in the lime juice but I omitted the fresh herbs just because those will taste better if you do it you know, when you're ready to serve it. So again, you could serve this with rice or cauliflower rice or just by itself, but really good. If you've never made curry, I would totally recommend that you try. It always turns out delicious and it's super simple and healthy. All right, so next up, we're gonna make a buffalo chicken casserole. I think I'm the most excited <laughs> about this one. This is a paleo recipe, but it can also be done for keto or low carb as well. If you aren't into low carb, definitely consider substituting pasta or rice for the cauliflower rice. And I think it would be delicious delicious also. So I have some hot sauce here. Frank's Red Hot is no sugar added, so that's what I'm using. I also have some of the Sir Kensington Ranch Dressing. You can get this on Thrive, as well as the Primal Kitchen Mayo, which is one of my favorites. I have some seasonings in this bowl, so salt, pepper, paprika, and garlic powder. I have some green onions. You'll need about four cups of shredded cooked chicken. You can cook this on your own, or a rotisserie chicken would be great for this as well. I have some cauliflower rice here. I went ahead and took this out of the freezer so that I could drain it. It does end up having some water content in it, so I just wanna make sure that my casserole isn't soggy. And then I have some green chilies and some nutritional yeast. Okay, so this is probably gonna be the easiest recipe that we're gonna <laughs> put together today. So easy is always good. So I need half a cup of Frank's. This kind of reminds me of that buffalo chicken dip, only, you know, add the cauliflower rice. I really love buffalo chicken dip. And then we need two tablespoons of ranch dressing. If you're not doing dairy free you can use any type of ranch dressing that you want but this kind is really good the sir kensington's now for the green chilies you can either use green chilies or banana peppers i didn't have a jar of banana peppers open and i had these in my pantry so i'm just going to use the green chilies and then i'm going to chop up some green onions about a third of a cup of those all right so let me give these ingredients a stir and then add in my cauliflower rice. I'm gonna add my chicken and my seasonings. Okay, the one thing I forgot to add was the mayo. So need just about a third of a cup of that. I was thinking it was kind of dry. I was like, huh, I wonder what I forgot. I forgot the mayo. All right, you know what else I forgot to add? My nutritional yeast. Okay, so I've got a freezer pan here and I'm just gonna spray a little bit of cooking spray in that not too much and turn this out into the pan I think I am going to put a little bit of cheese on top of this all right so I just have a tiny bit of cheddar cheese left in this bag so I'm gonna use that on the top all right 
So this is complete. All you have to do now is put some foil over it, label it, stick it in the freezer, and then when you're ready to bake it, you can either take it out of the freezer the night before or the morning of, let it sit and kind of thaw in the fridge all day, and then you just bake it at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes, and done. I would definitely serve this with a salad. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what this um, buffalo chicken casserole looks like after I baked it. I definitely think it would be delicious, like I said, with the cheese on top. I did not put any cheese on this batch, but it's really good. What I would do and what the recipe recommends you to do is to drizzle some additional ranch dressing over the top and I think that it would taste honestly almost exactly like buffalo chicken dip. Five stars recommend. So one thing I normally do is I buy these labels like the name tag labels on Amazon but I ran out and I'm waiting for more <laughs> to arrive so I just used a sharpie marker on the foil. Just make sure that you label it because you will always tell yourself I'm going to remember what's in there and then you won't. Trust me. So here's what we're making today. Chicken noodle soup, slow cooker, shredded buffalo chicken, a Greek lemon chicken and potatoes, delicious, a Thai chicken curry, and then last but not least, Cool Ranch chicken tacos. All the recipes will be linked in the description box below, so let's go. So I've got all of my freezer bags lined up here, and I like to use these bag holders. They really do make a huge, huge difference when you're putting together a bunch of freezer meals. It makes it so much easier, cleaner, you don't have the mess, you don't have to worry about your bags spilling all over the place, so I'll link those down below. We are gonna make Greek lemon chicken and potatoes. I'm really excited to try this freezer meal. So this one is a little bit different in that I've got bone-in chicken breasts instead of boneless skinless. I did remove the skin from them, um, but they are just regular chicken breasts on the bone. I've got two of those in here. I've got a bag of gold petite potatoes. These are already washed, some olive oil. We're also gonna use some salt and pepper, lemons, and oregano. We're gonna use the zest and the juice from these lemons, so it probably goes without saying, but you obviously want to zest the lemon before you juice it. It's kinda hard to do that after you <laughs> juice the lemon. This is what's called a microplane grater. If you don't have one of these, um, you can always try to use the small holes on a regular box grater, but I use this all the time for citrus zest. I find that it works really well. I'll link mine down below. Okay, and we'll just juice these lemons. And then we're gonna add, I don't know, probably about three tablespoons of olive oil, some pepper, about two teaspoons of salt. I'll probably just add, I don't know, most of this oregano. It's just gonna cook and flavor the potatoes and the chicken. And then we're just gonna have these little Yukon Gold potatoes and add those in the bag. For the potatoes that were really small, I just put those in whole. But I am gonna kind of shake this around a little bit just to get that olive oil mixed up with the potatoes. It smells delicious, by the way. I guess I'm assuming you could cook this in the slow cooker, but this one is actually an instant pot meal. When it's time to serve it, you just cook it in the instant pot and then you can garnish it with a little bit of fresh um, parsley or oregano and some feta cheese, yum. This is all thawed out. We've got our chicken, oregano, potatoes in here. And I'm just gonna dump all this in the Instant Pot. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a sprinkle of salt just because I wanna make sure that <laughs> chicken is seasoned. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick the lid on this. We're gonna pressure cook this on high for 15 minutes. Sometimes I get questions on which Instant Pot I have. So this is a six quart Instant Pot and I link it down below. I ordered it on Amazon. I also have an eight quart Instant Pot. I like having the larger one for when I make larger batches of things like chicken stock and things like that. Obviously they all work the same and I've even had off-brand Instant Pots like a Kasori one before and they work just fine. The one that I originally purchased like seven, eight years ago, I don't think that model is available anymore. Um, but I really like this one because I just feel like the interface is very easy to use and intuitive. Our chicken and potatoes are done. I let the Instant Pot do a natural pressure release for about 10 minutes. 
And um, what I'm gonna do now is just go through and remove the oregano stems. But you can see here, I already kind of tried to shred the chicken, how well it shreds. Let's try a little bit, dipped in that. There's like a lemon sauce in the bottom. Oh man, that is really good. I'm like almost shocked <laughs> by how, if you like lemon chicken, seriously try this. Okay, let's try a potato. Hot. Okay, that's delightful. Yum, I'm so excited about this. If you like any type of lemony chicken or Greek food, try this, it is so delicious. I crumbled up some feta over the top. I added a lemon because I'm gonna take a pretty picture of it, but yeah, this one's a winner. This one is super easy, don't blink or you're gonna miss it. <laughs> so this is Cool Ranch Chicken Tacos. In my freezer bag here, I've already got my frozen chicken breasts. Uh, about two pounds, I would say. That's, you know, about six chicken breasts, depending on how big they are. I've got some chicken stock here, one lime, and then a packet of taco seasoning mix. And then um, you need a packet of ranch seasoning mix. However, I always keep this on hand. I buy it in bulk on Amazon. I can link it down below. It's delicious. It's green onion dip mix, but it tastes basically like ranch. One of the questions I get about freezer meals sometimes is do you have to mix um, like the ingredients together before you put them in the bag? And I would say, you know, for the most part, no. If you have something like a marinade or something um, or like a curry sauce or something like that, you know, that I might mix together before I put it in the bag. But like this, I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid to it. So in this case, I'm just adding the dry ingredients first and then when I pour the liquids over, I can kind of smush it together and mix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my lime juice, just the juice of one lime. And then about a half a cup of chicken broth. This is actually chicken stock that I had in the refrigerator. So it's a little bit <laughs> gelatiny, like regular chicken stock is. If you don't have any chicken stock on hand, just add a little water. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be just fine. And then like I said, I'll go ahead and mix this up, label it, stick it in the freezer, bang, bam, bang, bang, boom. We've done ourselves a freezer meal. So tonight we're gonna do our Cool Ranch chicken tacos. So I've got my uh, contents of the freezer bag in here. I just ran some warm water over this just to kind of defrost the liquid a little bit and loosen it from the bag. So I'm gonna put this in the slow cooker and we're gonna do low for about seven hours. After the chicken was cooked, I went ahead and shredded it just right in the crock pot and mixed it in with the liquids. We had this as tacos, but you could also make quesadillas or burrito bowls with it. It was so good. So we're gonna do freezer chicken noodle soup. So in my bag here, I went ahead and already put my chicken in there. I've just got four kind of small to medium chicken breasts that are frozen. And then for seasonings, I've got oregano, basil, garlic powder, and bay leaves some chicken bouillon powder, one onion, I've got some celery and carrots, and then when you cook the dish, so we won't need this till the day of cooking, you'll need some egg noodles. So in order to save time with this particular recipe, I tried to find like the pre-chopped carrot onion celery mix, but my store didn't have it. So I just went ahead and bought this mix of pre-washed celery and baby carrots, and then I will uh, go ahead and chop the onion up so you can use regular whole carrots. You just probably want to peel them. And I'm just going to slice these into coins. That's about one cup of chopped carrot. I'm going to add that. So for celery, I like to kind of cut it lengthwise before I cut it crosswise just because I want smaller chunks. But you can do it however you like if you like larger ones. And honestly, to make this even quicker, I, I'm pretty sure that you can find pre-chopped carrot, onion, and celery in the freezer section. I probably should have looked there. So I don't know, that's about three quarters of a cup celery. So we've got most of our ingredients in the freezer bag. We've got chicken, carrots, onion, and celery. Now we're gonna add seasoning. So about a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder, a teaspoon and a half of dried basil, a teaspoon of dried oregano. We'll add a bay leaf and then some ground pepper. I get a ton of questions about this pepper mill 
Um, I'll link it down below. I like it because you can basically grind the pepper into this little reservoir here. And then if you want to measure it out, obviously you can. Um, I usually just eyeball it, but it's super convenient for that. And then you just fill up the peppercorns in here. And then the last thing is two and a half tablespoons of uh, chicken bouillon. I really love this Nor chicken bouillon. I use it in tons of dishes. It gives a lot of flavor. What we'll end up doing when we go to cook this is actually adding all of this to the crock pot then adding the water. So the water is gonna kind of create that chicken broth with all of the spices and the seasoning. So I'm gonna label this, zip it up, and put it in the freezer. I'm gonna go ahead and put my contents in here from the bag. If you find that there's a couple spices still kind of in the bottom of here, you can rinse it out with a little bit of water. I'm gonna add eight cups of water. I'm just gonna kind of make sure that the chicken is submerged and mix up the spices with the water just a little bit. Now I've got my egg noodles here, so we'll go ahead and add those at the end, obviously. Um, but for this particular recipe, so since my chicken breasts are still partially frozen, um, I've got about six hours till dinner. I'm gonna start this on high, and then as soon as it kind of comes to heat and starts bubbling away and maybe cooks for an hour, I'll turn it down to low. Um, if you're gonna cook this all day, I would say cook it on low for eight hours, um, high for four hours. Since the chicken breasts are kind of small, they probably won't need um, a ton of, of cook time. Okay, so our chicken is done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this just into a bowl so I can shred it. Okay, so we're gonna add the shredded chicken back into the broth. And then we're gonna add eight ounces of dry egg noodles, which is about two thirds of this bag. And these will just cook in the broth. Depending on how much they kind of expand, we might have to add a little bit of extra broth, um, but we'll kind of gauge that. So I'll put the lid on this. Depending on the temperature that your slow cooker runs at, usually this takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So just keep it covered and then check it, see until the noodles are tender. Okay, so my noodles are finished. I did add uh, about two extra cups of chicken broth and a trick I have is to squeeze the juice of a lemon in when you're done making your chicken soup. It just adds a little bit of brightness to the soup, you're not gonna taste, like it's not gonna taste like lemony or anything like that. Um, it's just gonna add a little bit of brightness. So here's our bay leaf, let's take that out. This slow cooker chicken noodle soup turned out so good. I highly, highly recommend it. We had it with some rolls and then I made some veggies and kind of a cheese and cracker tray on the side, but super kid friendly. So if you're looking for a family friendly dinner that's super easy and delicious, recommend this one highly. So we're gonna make some freezer chicken curry, which I love, so can't wait for this one. I've got some cubed chicken breast here, some chicken stock, some red curry paste. You can probably use any color of curry paste that you want, green or yellow, whatever you can find in the store. Brown sugar, fish sauce, soy sauce, and then I just chopped up some bell pepper and some onion. I left the pieces pretty large because you have to remember when you cook things like this down in the slow cooker, it gets very soft and kind of falls apart a little bit. So cutting them into larger chunks is not gonna hurt at all. And then I've also got some garlic and some ginger paste. So I was thinking for this one, I would whisk everything together in a bowl, but let's try to put it in the bag and mix it up that way. We'll see how that works. I'm gonna add one cup of chicken stock this particular curry paste comes in an envelope so it's easy to squeeze out but the thai kitchens brand which i sometimes get at the store comes in a jar but we're gonna add how much is that i don't know three to four tablespoons about a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar i'm also gonna add one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce and then one and a half tablespoons of fish sauce and then I love the convenience of these ginger and garlic paste. You can get them in the produce aisle. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of ginger and then 
probably a little over a tablespoon of garlic. I'm just gonna go ahead and whisk this up in the bag and I think that's gonna work just fine. Okay, I'm gonna add my chicken and then I'm gonna add my peppers and onions and then I'll just mix it up a little bit and this one is done. For this particular recipe, after it's cooked, add lime juice and coconut milk into the slow cooker and then obviously you can eat it with rice, garnish it with cilantro. For this one, I really recommend using the other brand of curry paste, the Thai Kitchen Red Curry Paste. I don't prefer this one that I use today, so I feel like the flavor could have been a little bit better, but other than that, it was pretty good. The reason I like this recipe is because you can really use it for so many things. Once you cook the buffalo chicken in the slow cooker, you can use it for pizza, quesadillas, you can put it on sandwiches, wraps, salads, bowls, you can make buffalo chicken dip with it, so many different things. So in here, I've got some chicken breast. You need some ranch seasoning mix. I'm gonna use the Laura Scudder's Green Onion Dip Mix, one bottle of Frank's Red Hot, and then just a half a stick of butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in my ranch seasoning. We'll add our butter. And then the whole bottle of Frank's Red Hot. Obviously that mixed with the like juice from the chicken and the butter is going to make the buffalo sauce. And the good thing about this one is that it's basically a one pot meal, right? So once it's cooked in the slow cooker, you can just shred it right in there with a fork and then use it however you want. So we've got our buffalo chicken mixture here. This is partially thawed. The chicken's still frozen. I'm gonna rinse this out with just a little bit of water and then I'm gonna cook this on high for four hours. So you can see this chicken is very tender and cooked so i'm just going to use one of these meat choppers that i have so we are back with our buffalo shredded chicken so i did try this after i <laughs> shredded it in the crock pot you guys got to try this i have never made it before with the ranch packet combined with the buffalo sauce it turned out so good i had some for lunch <laughs> on like a bowl salad type deal and I took some out of here now for dinner. I'm gonna make Adam and Connor some buffalo chicken quesadillas. Buffalo chicken quesadillas. I just toasted them in a skillet with some avocado oil spray and tortillas and some cheese ranch dressing. Super good, highly recommend. Tonight for dinner, I am making lemon chicken and this is something that I had uh, every so often growing up, but when I make it, it never turns out exactly like my mom's, but I'm gonna try anyway. Basically, I just have four chicken breasts here that I cut into like tenders, and then I just season them with salt and pepper. I have four lemons, so what I'll end up doing is just dredging these in flour, and then sauteing them in a pan and adding um, chicken stock, sliced lemons, and lemon juice. And then with it, um, I'm gonna make some rice, which is what I always had with it. So I'm going to make instant pot rice. I have one and a half cups of rice here in this um, strainer. And I'm gonna rinse it because I don't want it to be super sticky. When it's done, I want it to be more fluffy. So I'm gonna put this in the instant pot with equal amount of water, um, some butter, like maybe just a tablespoon, and then some salt. All right, so in here I have equal parts rice and water, some butter and some salt, and I, Every time I make this, I always just Google it because I can never remember. So it just says to use the rice setting. Um, and then once that's done, I'll let it do a natural pressure release for 10 minutes and then it should be good to go. This is jasmine rice, by the way. So I think the easiest way to do this is just to put the flour in the chicken in a Ziploc bag and then kind of shake it around. So all the chicken's coated. I just have some olive oil heating up in a skillet here and then I sliced my lemon and tried to get out as many of the seeds as I could because obviously I don't want those in the dish. So I'm just gonna start my chicken um, sauteing in the olive oil. So what I'm gonna do is put these lemon slices in here on top. I might cut up another lemon. And then 
his pour in the chicken stock. This is homemade chicken stock that I had in my freezer, so you can use whatever you have on hand. And then basically, this is just going to simmer until the chicken is like cooked through and tender, and this, the um, flour on the chicken will help thicken up the sauce. And I'm going to add some more lemon juice also. So the rice is done, but I'm going to let that um, just sit for 10 minutes before I release the pressure. That's called a natural pressure release if you're not familiar with the Instant Pot. And then I'm just going to let this simmer for probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 more minutes um, on low heat. And then I keep the lid cracked just a little bit to let some of the liquid um, evaporate so the sauce thickens up. Okay, so the rice is done. It's just in here keeping warm. I can't cook rice. I'm very terrible at cooking rice, so the Instant Pot is how I like to do it. And then uh, the chicken is done. So the sauce is pretty loose, and that's honestly how it usually is. I'm just going to let it cool for a little bit and let it thicken up. I did add just a little bit of honey to this because it had a really strong lemon flavor. This does have a strong lemon flavor, so just know that if you're going to make it. Um, and then I made a salad, which is in the refrigerator. Um, I just rubbed the bowl with some garlic cloves, and then there's um, spring mix in there with tomatoes, carrots, and peppers. And then I have a uh, bowl here with some butter. I microwaved some peas, so I'm going to get those out and we'll be ready to eat. Okay, it is... Saturday night, here's what we're having for dinner. I made lemon chicken and some rice. And there's a salad with some garlic dressing and some peas with butter. Okay, so next up for dinner, I am making this mushroom sauce chicken with a cream gnocchi, super delicious. Chicken breast, some gnocchi, Parmesan, some cremini mushrooms. I'll probably cook these up separately since Adam's the only one that likes mushrooms. Some spinach, chives, and then some sour cream, Dijon, some um, chicken, demi glace concentrate, and then some butter. Sometimes what I do when I get stuff like this is like I have a container of sour cream in the refrigerator right now. So I'll probably just use that. I'll show you the process of dinner tonight. This looks delicious. Um, I might add some corn on the side because I have some frozen sweet corn in the oven. We'll see. So I've got my spinach chopped up, my chives chopped up, uh, my mushrooms are chopped up back here. I'm going to saute those separately. And then the chicken is seasoned with a little bit of garlic powder and some pepper. All right, so my chicken is sauteing. I'm going to finish that on the other side, and I've got my mushrooms going back here also. Chicken's done. I went ahead and put it in the oven on warm, uh, with, covered with a piece of foil. I've got the gnocchi in here crisping up. I put some spinach on top of there. I'm just gonna put in some water and then put a lid on it and let it steam. All right, so here is what the chicken turned out like in the sauce, it looks delicious. Here is what the gnocchi turned out like. Oh, it's fogging up my camera. I tasted it, it's really good. And then I just have the onions, or I'm sorry, the mushrooms rather keeping warm in the oven until Adam gets back, he just took Kira to swim practice. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to work on for dinner tonight is getting my rice ready. Now, I've mentioned this in videos before, but I am terrible at cooking rice, and so I always like to cook it in my electric pressure cooker. And I have here one and a half cups of jasmine rice. I'm going to put it into the pressure cooker here 
and then I will add an equal amount of water, some salt, and a pat of butter. In here I poured my water and I also put um, a pat of butter and a little bit of salt. Butter is optional, but I do like adding that because it gave, gives it a lot of flavor. All right, so I'm just gonna pop the lid on this. And then it does have a sort of valve uh, indication over here that sets to venting or locking, which is like sealing. And then all I do is just push the uh, rice button. And then that automatically sets it to six minutes at kind of medium pressure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on that and see how it turns out. Typically when I do this, I always use equal parts water, rice, and use the rice function and it turns out great. So we will see. The next thing for this recipe is to make the slaw that goes with it. So I am going to take half of my green onions here. I have about four tablespoons of mayonnaise in uh, my bowl here and I'm gonna dice up these, or slice up rather, these green onions and add them to the mayo. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the juice of one lime. I'm just making the dressing for our slaw here. Okay, and then the recipe also says to mix olive oil, salt, and pepper. So I'm just going to mix this up. I'm going to add my coleslaw. So I'm going to mix this slaw up and let it kind of, you know, sit together for a little bit before we eat. It's about 5.20 right now and we probably won't eat until after 6.00. So what I'll do is I'll mix this together and just let this sit in the refrigerator to um, kind of let the coleslaw or cabbage wilt down a bit and let the flavors combine and then we'll see sort of what else it needs. All right, so I have a skillet heating up here with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, my chicken breasts have already been seasoned. I did this a little bit earlier. So it's just four chicken breasts with salt, pepper, and garlic powder on both sides. And then I have some pineapple rings here that I'm also gonna crisp up in the pan. And so I'm just going to get my pineapple rings in the skillet here and brown those up on both sides. All right, so my pineapple looks like it is successfully getting browned. So I'm going to remove that to a plate and then add my chicken breast. And then uh, there is a teriyaki sauce glaze that is going to go on this so we'll add that after the chicken is cooked i'm going to saute this on both sides until it is cooked through all right so our rice is done it beeped i'm going to go ahead and let the pressure out and we'll see if it's cooked so you can see this is on keep warm which is perfect and the rice turned out so perfect you guys, seriously, if you have not tried cooking your rice in an electric pressure cooker, you really need to try it. Okay, so for the chicken, what I did was I browned it on both sides. I added just a little bit of water and the juice of a lime, and then I added the teriyaki glaze that was included in the uh, HelloFresh box, along with some of the pineapple and I just have this on like a little bit of a lower heat because I'm planning to um, try to cook the rest of the chicken through and not, you know, have it burnt on the outside and not cooked on the inside. I also have some broccoli that I steamed in this uh, pan back here. So we will have that in addition to this meal. By my window. It's my chest right in the morning. Next up, we are making our favorite 
Einergarten chicken recipes. This video was inspired by a video that Food Network posted on YouTube, so I will link the original video down below. I will be making these same recipes today and I will be letting you know how they turned out and whether I'll be making them again. So I have to tell you guys that I have been a fan of Ina Garten since way back in the day. I actually went to college in the early 2000s and Food Network was always on in my apartment while I was in college. I was watching Ina and Giada and Rachel Ray and Iron Chef. And I have always loved to cook since I was a kid, but when I got out on my own, I could really try out these different techniques and recipes. So I had a lot of fun doing that when I was in college. But here's what we're gonna make today. We're going to make some buttermilk fried chicken, uh, an engagement roast chicken, as well as a skillet roasted lemon chicken. Uh, the other two dishes are a lemon and garlic roast chicken with bacon on top, so delicious. And then last but not least, a recipe for Parmesan chicken with a simple salad. Okay, so the first recipe that we're going to get started with is this engagement roast chicken. So I just have a chicken that I grabbed from Costco. Um, this one, it happens to be organic, but you can use whatever whole chicken that you can find in your grocery store. I went ahead and rinsed that out in the sink, patted it dry, and I just have it in a large roasting pan here. That's what I'm going to um, pop it into the oven in. So for this chicken, you just want to make sure that you season it really well you have to always remember when you're cooking whole birds whether it's a turkey or a chicken that there is quite a lot of meat and so don't be shy with the seasoning otherwise your um, chicken might turn out quite bland so make sure that you season the inside of the chicken liberally with salt and pepper and then I'm going to stuff this with some uh, onions as well as some garlic and then we're going to drizzle olive oil on the outside of it and roast it in the oven at 425 degrees <music> Once the chicken is seasoned, I'm going to tie up the legs together with some kitchen twine. I usually just get this on Amazon. I buy a roll and it lasts forever. It's super inexpensive and you can use it for lots of things in the kitchen. So I'll link the one that I have down below and any other kitchen tools that I use in this video. I always try to um, link those in the description box if you guys have questions about specifically what I use or where I got them. Um, for this, I'm also going to make sure sure that I tuck the wing tips under the bird just kind of fold them over and tuck them in so that they don't burn and then I'm also going to scatter some cut up lemons and some onions in the roasting pan around the chicken now if I had to do this again I would definitely use a smaller roasting pan um, my onions did end up burning a little bit in the oven so just keep that in mind Okay, so I'm just seasoning the onions and the lemon with some olive oil and salt and pepper. And like I said, I wish I would have had more to put in the pan or would have used a smaller pan, but here's what it looked like before I put it in the oven. I actually ran out of, <laughs> of onions while I was making this and I didn't realize I was so low, um, but I was kind of already too late. So here's what it looked like when it came out of the oven. I roasted it at 425 for about an hour and a half. Once it came out, I removed it to a platter, covered it with foil, and let it rest while I made the gravy. One of the things I really like about this Cuisinart roasting pan is that it can go right from the oven to the stovetop and you can make your gravy in it. Here is what the chicken looked like. I made some baked potatoes and some French onion soup with that. Really good and tender, but you'll actually see the next roast chicken recipe that we make turns out a lot better. So while I don't think I would make this particular roasted chicken recipe again, I'll definitely be making the other one. 
Okay, so next up is a recipe for buttermilk fried chicken. You guys are going to need to uh, take an extra dose of Lipitor if you make this meal, but <laughs> it was really good. Uh, it was just like a really heavy meal, but what else is fried chicken, right? So for the brine for this chicken, we're actually going to... Um, not necessarily a brine, I guess, but we're going to marinate it in buttermilk and that really helps to tenderize the chicken. The thing that is really neat about this recipe is that it calls for boneless chicken breasts, which I actually prefer. So what I did was I put my chicken breasts in a container with salt and pepper, buttermilk. I sliced up a jalapeno and put that in there as well as a shallot. And then I just stirred everything around with the fork, making sure that everything was coated. You want to refrigerate this for at least eight hours, but not more than 24 hours, um, just so that the chicken will get um, infused with that buttermilk flavor and the onion and the jalapeno. It was so good. This recipe is definitely a keeper, uh, like I said, but it, it is a heavy meal. So when it's time to eat, I'm going to go ahead and make the flour mixture for the fried chicken. So I have some all-purpose flour in my bowl and I'm going to mix that with some baking powder, some smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, and celery salt. And I also added some salt and pepper and that is the uh, flour seasoning that will dredge the chicken in before we fry it. Okay, so I have my Dutch oven heating on the stove with some canola oil to fry the chicken in. And now we're going to coat this. We're actually going to double dip it. So we'll take the chicken from the marinade into the flour mixture, back into the buttermilk, and then back into the flour um, before you fry it. That helps give it a really thick, crispy um, coating on the outside. And I just went ahead and did this with a fork so that I didn't get my fingers all coated with flour and buttermilk it's just as easy when and if i do make this recipe again i will probably butterfly butterfly my chicken or cut it in half uh, because even though this chicken was really good i did think that the chicken breast was maybe a little bit too thick and it would have been easier to eat if the um, chicken itself would have been a little bit thinner <music> So if you guys are wanting to make any of these recipes, I'll have them all linked down below. One thing I actually did, which was kind of a bonus and the recipe didn't call for, was I actually also breaded the uh, jalapenos that were in the <laughs> brine and fried those. And oh my gosh, those were so good. So if you make this, I would definitely recommend doing that. But once your oil is heated to 350 degrees and you can definitely use a candy thermometer if you want clipped onto the side of your pan, then you can put the chicken in and fry it for probably around five to seven minutes per side, I would say. Um, chicken is really one of those things that depends on how hot your oil is, how thick the chicken is, and so I can't really give you um, an exact time. You'll just have to use a thermometer if you are not sure. Here's what those little jalapeno coins looked like after we fried them. I actually served them with some ranch dressing and they were super good. Uh, here is the chicken after it came out of the hot oil. I just put it on a rack to cool. We had this with some mac and cheese. I also had some leftover mashed potatoes in the fridge. I made some chicken gravy and some green beans and there is no way that I could eat all this, but it was a really great dinner. I definitely think the combination of the buttermilk marinade plus the flour and seasoning that this recipe has is a true winner. So if you're looking for a good fried chicken recipe, I would definitely recommend this one and I will probably be making again next time I wanna make fried chicken. 
Okay, this next recipe is a recipe for Parmesan chicken. I have to say this one was probably my favorite out of the bunch and I will definitely be making it again. The recipe starts with pounding out some boneless skinless chicken breasts. So I just like to do that in a Ziploc bag with a meat mallet. I got this one from Ikea, but you can get them super inexpensively and it's a good kitchen tool to have not only for pounding meat, but I also use it to pound nuts and spices as well. But if you pound these in the a black bag there's really no mess and it's super easy so this recipe calls for a salad on top so this isn't necessarily a traditional chicken parm where you're making like a marinara sauce and things like that it's a crusted chicken breast with a salad on top that has a lemon vinaigrette and it's really really good so I have some spring mix here and I'm just giving that a wash in my salad spinner to make sure that it's clean I'm going to spin it dry and then we'll go ahead and make the vinaigrette for um, the salad so for the lemon vinaigrette you will need uh, a quarter cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice that's about two lemons you'll also need a uh, half a cup of olive oil half a teaspoon of kosher salt and a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper I did add a little bit of honey to this vinaigrette that's optional I always like to add a little bit of honey especially when I'm making like citrus vinaigrettes because I think it cuts the bitterness of the lemon a little bit and just gives it a more well-rounded flavor but you can just combine all the ingredients in the bottom of a salad bowl whisk it together and then what I like to do to make this ahead of time is I actually just make the vinaigrette in the bottom of the bowl and then I pile my salad greens on top stick it in the fridge and then when dinner's ready all I have to do is toss it all together um, by keeping the vinaigrette at the bottom of the bowl and the salad on top it doesn't get soggy and it saves you time when it's time to eat Okay, so now we're gonna make our dredging station for the crusted Parmesan chicken. So I have some flour mixed with salt and pepper in one bowl, and then in another bowl, I'm going to crack a couple of eggs, mix that with a few tablespoons of water and whisk that up. And then in the third bowl, we are going to freshly grate some Parmesan cheese and mix that with some panko breadcrumbs. You could definitely use pre-grated Parmesan cheese. I just had this in my fridge and wanted to use it up. so. I grated it on the fine holes of a box grater. You could also um, process it in your food processor until it was very finely grated. Did you guys catch there? I just gave a little chunk of Parmesan cheese to Murphy. <laughs> For all of you guys who don't think he gets anything, yes, he gets plenty of treats. Uh, I am mixing the Parmesan cheese with the panko breadcrumbs. And next I'm going to start coating my chicken. So I have my flour egg and breadcrumb that is the order in which that goes and then I have my skillet heating up with just a little bit of olive oil this recipe is just a shallow fry so it's definitely not a deep fry you definitely do not need a ton of oil so I'm going to take my chicken breast dip it first in the seasoned flour then in the egg and then I'm going to put it into the breadcrumb and kind of kind of push that breadcrumb and Parmesan mixture into the chicken to make sure that it gets coated evenly. And once you pound these chicken breasts out, you're probably only gonna have room in your pan for two of them, so that's fine. Just fry them two at a time, and then I like to just keep a baking rack on a cookie sheet in my oven at a warm temperature, usually around 250 or 300, and then I can place the cooked chicken in there uh, while I'm waiting on the other two to cook. So here's what it looks like when it's cooking. Your oil will get brown and discolored just because you're you have cheese in your breading and so you know it's going to crisp onto the bottom of the pan but mine didn't really burn um, at all it cooked just fine and here I am putting my first batch of chicken into that rack in the oven. So while the second batch of chicken was cooking, uh, I went ahead and tossed my greens. So I'm just tossing together those greens with the dressing. And then the recipe didn't call for this, but since I had some extra Parmesan cheese, I decided to use my vegetable peeler and just shave some on the top, which was totally delicious. And I would definitely recommend doing that if you have some left over as well. So here's what those Parmesan crusted chicken breasts looked like when they were done. This 
this was a real winner. Like I said, I think this is probably my favorite out of this bunch of recipes. I really love the combination of like cold salad with warm chicken. My husband Adam is not a huge fan of that, so he wanted his salad on the side. Um, but either way, it's, it's delicious and I would definitely recommend this recipe. So I ended up serving it for myself with the salad on the top, but I did make some ravioli on the side with some marinara sauce for my family. So I just had some uh, frozen fresh ravioli that I boiled up and I tossed it with some marinara sauce. So they had that on the side. And then here is what the chicken looks like with the salad on top. Totally delicious. Definitely recommend trying this. Okay, so next up I'm sharing the lemon and garlic roast chicken, and this is definitely the one I would recommend trying if you want to try a roast chicken recipe. So again, I'm starting with a whole chicken. Uh, I do actually like to rinse my chicken off when it's a whole chicken just to make sure that it's clean, it uh, doesn't have any extra goodies on the inside, and it doesn't have any extra feathers on it because that will happen sometimes with with a whole chicken so I rinse that off and this time I'm trying a cast iron skillet instead of that big roasting pan which this actually worked out a lot better and if you have a cast iron skillet definitely try it for this so in this recipe it calls to stuff the chicken with some fresh thyme some garlic and some lemon so I'm going to go ahead and do that I'm also going to season the inside of the chicken generously with salt and pepper. I have an herb garden on my back deck and so I had some sage that I wanted to put in there as well. So I went ahead and added that, but you don't have to add that. Just stuff everything into the cavity and then we're basically going to follow the same um, procedure as we did before. So this recipe instead of olive oil calls for melted butter. So I melted some butter and I brushed it over the chicken and then I'm going to season that with salt and pepper. And then I'll go ahead and tie the legs together with some kitchen twine and tuck the wings under. And then we're also going to add some garlic and some lemon to the roasting pan as well. Okay, so I'm just quartering up my lemon and my extra garlic and I'm going to put that into the bottom of my cast iron skillet just to give it some extra flavor. Um, this makes enough broth in the bottom of the pan to definitely make a gravy with. So if you're serving this with like potatoes or something like that, that would be delicious as well. The last step is to put some bacon on top of the chicken. So who wouldn't like this? It's, it's totally delicious. I would definitely recommend it. So I just have about half a pound of bacon here and I'm just laying those strips all over the chicken. So here is our little chicken with its bacon blanket. So cute. It's going to go into the oven at 425 degrees for one hour. After the hour, you can remove the bacon, roast it for another half hour, and it's done. Here's what it looks like. It's so good. We didn't actually have this for supper. I just roasted it up, and we're going to make chicken salad with, us, with it this week. It was so good. It, definitely a lot of flavor in that chicken from the melted butter and the bacon. Okay, so next up I'm gonna share this uh, recipe for a skillet roasted lemon chicken. I will tell you that I did modify the kind of chicken that I used in this recipe from the original recipe. The original recipe called for um, basically a butterfly whole chicken, but again, I'm just not a huge fan of chicken on the bone. I did obviously roast two chickens for this particular video, uh, which were really good. I just, I don't prefer it. Um, and so I decided to try this particular recipe with chicken breast. And I have to say it turned out so good. I would definitely recommend it. So I have my cast iron skillet here. I sliced up a lemon and put that in the bottom. Next, I sliced up an onion and put that in the bottom. 
Now I'm going to put some chicken breast over the top of that. So I used five regular sized chicken breasts and I'm just placing those over the lemon and the onion in the skillet. And next we're going to make the olive oil mixture that goes on the chicken before we roast it. So I have some fennel seeds and I just have them in a little Ziploc bag. I'm using my meat mallet to crush those. I'm going to put a third of a cup of olive oil in a measuring cup and add those crushed fennel seeds. This gave the chicken a really great flavor. So um, it's definitely something that I probably wouldn't have tried on my own. So I'm glad I made this recipe. Next, I have some fresh thyme. Again, I got this out of my herb garden on my back deck. You could definitely use dried thyme, I think, if you don't have fresh thyme, um, but I'm just going to chop that up and get it added to the olive oil mixture, and then this is what we'll brush over the chicken before we roast it. So I am brushing the herb oil mixture on the chicken breast, seasoning it with salt and pepper, and then I'm just using a fork to turn that over so I can season the other side. Uh, I have to tell you, again, I was just so pleasantly surprised by the results of this recipe. You know, sometimes when you roast chicken breast in the oven and it can become kind of dry and tough, this recipe was the exact opposite. It turned out so tender and so good. Uh, my kids both polished off their chicken with no complaints. The husband did too, and he doesn't even really like lemon chicken that much, but it was that delicious. So I went ahead and popped that in the oven, and this is going to roast for uh, about 30 minutes at 450 degrees. I'm also making some roasted broccoli and potatoes with this, and I'm going to put a cheese sauce on that. You'll see the finished um, dish here in a little bit. So after I roasted that for about 30 minutes, I removed it, added some wine, put it back in the oven for 15 minutes, and then here is what it looks like when it's done. So I let it rest, and then I went ahead and sliced it up and put it on a plate with some extra lemon slices. We also had this with some steamed carrots and then with the cheesy broccoli and potatoes. Would definitely recommend this recipe with the chicken breast and I will definitely be making it again. Today I'm just sharing a recipe with you guys. This is from the Skinny Taste Fast and Slow Cookbook and it is the slow cooker chicken and dumpling soup. Uh, this sounded really good this week. So I'm going to get started by putting some chopped onions and carrots in the bottom of my Kasori multi cooker. Uh, if you don't have one of these multi cookers or you don't have a crock pot that can saute, you would just go ahead and do this step on um, the stovetop. But I really love this multi cooker. I use it at least once a week, sometimes twice. I like that it has a programmable function. It will keep warm after you um, or after the food is finished cooking. I like that you can saute in it. So I really loved it. You can get it on Amazon. Um, and yeah, I, I would, I would seriously recommend it. So again, um, you can also add celery to this. I didn't just because my kids are kind of picky about that kind of stuff and I wanted to make sure that they ate it. So I did add a squeeze of garlic paste and I'll go ahead and pop that insert into the multi cooker and then set it to the saute function. I put the lid on just so it would heat up a little bit quicker, but basically you just want to sort of get the rawness off of the veggies. You don't have to cook them all the way through because this is going to cook all day in the slow cooker. So I just stirred that around and let it saute a little bit more. And then when it is finished cooking, I will add a sprinkle of flour to the mix. And this is what will help thicken your broth. So I added about a quarter cup of flour, some salt and some pepper. And then I just cooked that so that the raw taste would, um, you know, get cooked out of the flour. I will also type this recipe up in the description box below and I'll also leave a link to the cookbook. I have made several um, recipes from this cookbook and I have loved all of them. So uh, to the uh, roux mixture with the veggies, I'm going to add some turkey stock. This was actually homemade turkey stock that I had made in my instant pot uh, and I needed to supplement that with a little bit of chicken broth. I actually um, 
one of my Facebook friends, Randy, mentioned that she made this recipe and it was a little bit bland. I didn't find that mine was bland, but maybe that's because I used the homemade stock. Um, but I, I would make sure that you're using like a really flavored chicken stock, either that or use homemade or add a lot of seasoning to it. So once the broth is in, you can go ahead and add your chicken breast. I'm just adding two frozen chicken breasts that I got from Costco. I'm going to cook this on low all day, so anywhere from eight to nine hours until the chicken is cooked through and you can easily shred it with a fork. So after this was done cooking all day, I am going to remove it to a plate from the slow cooker and we'll go ahead and shred that up and then add it back to the broth and then we'll make our dumplings. You can see how easily the chicken is shredding with just a fork. Um, Adam did say after we ate this that he wished some of the chicken would have been in smaller pieces. So I think next time I'll use a knife to chop it up, but overall it's a really good way to cook chicken um, all day in the slow cooker. It gets really tender. So the next thing that I'm going to mix up is the dough for the dumplings. So for that, you will need some flour, um, one egg yolk, some baking powder, um, salt, pepper, and then I think the original recipe calls for like dried chives in the dumplings. Again, I didn't put those in. My kids really aren't super picky. They eat a lot of different things, but sometimes it's just easier to leave the green stuff out because, <laughs> because it's like, I don't want to fight at dinner time. I'm sure you guys know how that is. Uh, and also the original recipe called for um, chicken broth uh, to moisten the dumplings, but I used half chicken broth and half half and half just because I thought it would make them a little bit richer. So the dumpling dough will be quite thick. You just want to make sure that that is all incorporated and then you can drop that right into the liquid in your slow cooker and then cook this on medium or high for probably 30 minutes to an hour. I actually think I left it in there longer than that, about two hours because we were um, going to swim practice. And I think next time too, I would leave, I would make sure that I make the dumplings a lot smaller. I thought I was making them small, but once they sit in that liquid and expand with the baking powder, um, they get quite large and I, I would probably just try to make them smaller the next time. Another thing I've used in place of homemade dumplings is gnocchi. That's a really good substitute if you don't want to make your own dumplings. But yeah, just cover that up and cook it until the dumplings are cooked through. Here is just a look at what it looks like. It is quite soupy, uh, so don't expect it to get super thick. But like I said, this was really good. It really hit the spot. I was like starving um, for dinner this night and everyone really liked it. So I will definitely be making it again, but I would encourage you to use homemade stock or a high quality stock. Don't forget to check out Grain Chef down below for all of your chicken needs and I will see you in the next one. Bye.